blast. And whether you're toting around your L.L. Bean bag, your travel bag, or a laptop bag, you're gonna want a Clippa bag hanger. Here is why. Unlike other purse hooks, you won't have to dig around because you keep it on the strap. It is so lightweight, and according to the brand, it is strong enough to hold 33 pounds. And according to the brand, thanks to a thin design and these non-slip foot pads on the ends, you only need half an inch for this to work its magic. That means you can hang your bag off thin edges, ledges, rails, and openings. And you're not limited to a flat surface, and that kind of versatility makes it a must-have for every bag. And whether you're working from home, heading to the office, the Shop Today team loves these puffy laptop sleeves from Bagu. We take our devices on the go everywhere, and the quilted cases actually come in a bunch of different colors, patterns, and three different sizes to cover everything from your tablet to your laptop, even your e-readers. These are amazing as an added layer of protection in your tote bag, in your backpack, and in case of any spills, the brand says that these are machine washable, which is great when you're on the go. And the designs are so cute. Okay, and let's talk about the trend that keeps on getting. I am talking about the fanny pack. It is stylish, functional, and an accessory you'll use nonstop all summer long. Lululemon's best-selling everywhere belt bag came out recently and it became so popular that the brand launched an extended strap size to be more inclusive. It makes it easier to wear however you want, whether it's a classic waist belt, a crossbody, or a shoulder bag style, but the design of the bag itself puts function at the forefront. It has a large zipper and inside it is so roomy, it has a bunch of pockets so you can keep everything handy and organized. All right, let's talk about a small accessory that can make a big impact, a brand new Apple Watch band. I love my Apple Watch for tracking steps, activities, and all of those calendar reminders. So when I wanna make it feel new, this chic watch strap is perfect. I feel like I have a brand new watch and it looks great with my outfit and all my jewelry. This band is compatible with all Apple Watch models and you can choose from over 20 different styles. They're all made with a lightweight resin that's gonna keep your watch secure while adding a pop of color to any outfit. Next up, we have an accessory that everybody in the family is going to love. Let's talk baseball caps. You know, the unofficial classic American accessory. The sun shielding hat actually got its humble beginning as a sun visor on the baseball field. And today, it's one of the hottest fashion trends that we can't get enough of. You can always spot an athlete wearing one. The baseball cap is so universal that men and women can wear it every day as part of any casual outfit. This summer, one thing's for sure. The sun is gonna be out and you're gonna need a hat. So consider this affordable Old Navy cap. According to the brand, it is made with durable, 100% cotton twill fabric, and it has a curved visor brim, a fabric covered button at the crown, and those essential air holes. Okay, this next one I am personally excited about because I love this brand. It is the Kitsch Microfiber Towel Scrunchie Set. They're almost like mini towels for your hair. And here's how it works. According to the brand, microfiber material is really soft and tends to dry hair faster while helping to minimize frizz. So the scrunchie acts like a little towel to help absorb excess water. And according to the brand, this is what allows hair to air dry naturally and reduce frizz. They're great for everyday use, but also perfect for summer. You can pop one in your bag to take to the pool or the beach or travel. And now let's finish up by talking about shoes and socks. Yes, socks can make such a difference in comfort. And these are one of my favorite from New Balance. They are great because they are made with a fabric that the brand says offers cooling technology and moisture wicking to keep your feet nice and dry all day long. They come in an athletic low cut style with mesh ventilation that according to the brand is helping to cool and create that airflow. These are great for the whole family. And lastly, we have a wardrobe essential, a classic pair of white sneakers. You can never go wrong with a pair of white sneakers and these knit kicks from Kariuma are a favorite among the whole Shop Today team. They're available for men and women in 17 different colors for under $100. The brand says that these eco-friendly sneakers don't just look and feel great. They're made with bamboo, sugarcane, cork, and recycled plastics from heel to toe. But most importantly to us, they're so lightweight, and the brand says they deliver a low impact with every stride, which you need for all day comfort. Let's go through the products one more time. The LL Bean Boat and Tote Bag, the Clippa, the Bagu Puffy Laptop Sleeve, the Lululemon Everywhere Belt Bag, the Resin Apple Watch Band, the Old Navy Baseball Cap, 
the Kitsch microfiber towel scrunchies, the New Balance cooling socks, and the Karyuma off-white knit sneakers. That's it for Editor's Picks. Up next, lifestyle influencer Jasmine Snow is chatting with Mako and Lobu about some of her favorite must-have products to style your weekend and office looks. From backpacks to mules, we've got a lot of great products coming your way. Welcome back. I'm Mako Njovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. If anyone knows how to style an outfit, it's our guest today, Jasmine Snow. She's a style expert and she's here to share her tips and tricks for elevating your look at the office or on the weekend. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. It's been so long and I'm so excited that we're talking about accessories for all. So here's the number one question. When it comes to shopping for accessories, should I be looking for inexpensive pieces or should I invest in my accessories? Well, what I always do is I always go for the inexpensive pieces. Here's the thing. I love to change it up, switch it out, change it with every outfit. So you don't want to spend tons and tons of money. And the trends change on the pieces that are classic. You're going to buy real jewelry if you're going for like diamonds or something like that. Of course, invest. But, you know, really save that for big gifts that you want to ask for. The other trendy stuff just... Do it where it's really inexpensive, affordable, and you can just have fun with it. And that's the whole idea, having fun. So let's speak about having fun. Can you mix patterns or prints or metals when it comes to accessories? I am all about the mix. I am about the mix on high-low, and I am all about the mix of metals. I think you can mix rose gold, regular gold, silver, 
gun metal, anything that you want, I think it goes. It is, as long as it works with your outfit and as long as you feel good about it, go for it. Right? Accessories make your whole outfit pop. You're so right. Let's dive into some of your picks. I'm so excited about these bobble bar hoops that you have here. Now, I see that they got a little sparkle, a little bling to them. Are they more special occasion or can you wear these every day? I love to wear these every day, but I think it's great because you can really dress them up for going out at night, on the weekend. I love that Baba Bar always offers a pack. They take all the work out of it. You don't have to do any of the mixing. Like, I love a good earring stack, and you kind of just don't have to think. It's already done. And when it's affordable like that, you can just mix and match however you want. All right, Jasmine, on to the next one, some weekend picks. We have the barrettes from Lulu's. As soon as I saw them, I thought, okay, these are great for bridesmaids or a bride, but you can certainly dress these down as well, right? Yes, that was my first instinct. We're coming upon wedding season, and it's a really easy accessory to throw in your hair and kind of dress things up right away. But you can also wear this. I love the idea of wearing it sort of casually on the weekend, but you can dress it up as well to go out at night. I just think it's really cool to just throw in your hair with jeans and a tee, and it kind of just zhuzhes things up. It really does. And I like how you can just clip it into your hair and it's gonna stay in place all night long. All right, on to more fun weekend things. This mini bag. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. I love the detail. What would you pair this with? Isn't she so cute? Oh, I love yeah. this one. Okay, I would pair this with everything, to be <laughs> completely honest. I love this as a weekend going out bag. Of course, it's a little mini bag, so it's perfect. It's not necessarily a clutch. It's this little top handle. We're seeing these structured bags everywhere. Mini bags are having such a moment right yes. now. But I do really like it for a daytime look too. Again, sort of that same thing as the barrette. If you want to elevate an outfit, and you're just in something very casual, go for it with the cute bag, like why not? Why and not? And I like that you can still fit in your essentials, right? Like my cell phone can fit in here as well if I'm going out for the weekend. If you can fit your phone, like that's the test. If yeah. you can fit your phone in it, you're good. You got everything else. I absolutely love this purse. This is great for the weekend. All right, so, so, so cute. All right, let's move on to items, accessories for the office. I wanna start with the mules. Those would be great for like an everyday staple, right? Exactly, so right now we're all kind of moving from home, from the couch, back to the office. We wanna be comfortable. And this is a great update on the flat and you know, easing your way back into real shoes for the office. It's very professional. But what I love about it is it's got a little jewelry on it. So it's just a little bit of shine on the toe and it just makes things fun. It really is fun. As soon as I saw this, I said, okay, this is great. A transition piece, right? We're in spring right now, but we're going into summer. So, so many different ways that you can style it. Exactly. Like you don't want to wear your big clunky boots right now, but we're not exactly ready for open toe just yet. So it's perfect. You're exactly right. It's the perfect transition shoe. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to this backpack, which is great for the office. Jasmine, I pack my lunch, my magazines. I pack everything into my backpack. Tell me about it. Yeah, so people are really in transition all day long now. Our lives have completely changed. We're going from working in a cafe to home, to an office, to picking up our kids from school. You maybe have your lunch, your computer. So it's really great to have a great big bag that you can put all of that stuff into, but it still is sleek and chic and it looks like it's an actual fashion piece and not just like your old school backpack that you threw on. Absolutely. Can I tell you a secret? I also looked at this. I have a couple of friends that are pregnant and I thought this would be a great like diaper bag. Is that crazy? No, I carry a diaper bag backpack all the time. And it's really nice because then my husband doesn't mind carrying it and it's easy for him to grab too. It's honestly, it is the best diaper bag for moms. It really is. I love a piece that is multifunctional. Speaking of multifunctional, this necklace right here is like the best of both worlds, right? Because you have different designs and detail. Do you wear it as is or would you stack it with other jewelry? Stacking is kind of my jam. I'm really into tons of gold chains right now. As you can see, I'm really always piling them on. But I think it's really nice to be able to mix your personal pieces in with chunkier, trendier pieces. It does work if you're going to like a wedding or something a little bit more dressy and you need it to be cleaner. It definitely works on its own. Don't get me wrong. You can do that if you'd like. But I just think it's really fun to kind of mix things up, have a little bit of sparkle, have a little bit of chains. And just, again, like, do your thing. Whatever it is that you feel good in, 
go for it. Go for it. And we're talking about accessories for all. I love how this is ageless as well. My mom can wear it, my sister can wear it, I can rock it, this is a great pick. Yeah, and it's accessories for all, but accessories for everything. So you can rock it to work, you can go on the weekend, go out, it really works. It's very multifunctional, like we said. Oh, you are everything. Thank you so much for joining us and dropping these tips about accessories for all. Have a great weekend, thank you. Thanks, you too. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the bobble bar earring set, the rhinestone barrette, the beaded mini bag, the motor chain mules, the backpack, and the bobble bar necklace. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Chassie Post is gonna share her favorite accessories in Style Finder. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and this episode is all about accessories. I've got some must-have items that will instantly upgrade and elevate your look in a pinch. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's start off with one of my absolute favorite trends of the summer, rattan. Rattan is actually the name of a climbing palm vine that can be woven in different styles to give you that fabulous straw basket look that we've seen so much of this season. And I love how the natural woven palm brings an organic and beachy touch to anything you pair it with. I mean, it almost looks like a little picnic basket and these great bags go anywhere. Dress them up or down, wear as a crossbody with everything from your bathing suit and a cover-up to shorts and a tee. Or dress it up by knotting the strap like a little top-handled bag. I love that. And I recently went to a fancy event and I carried a rattan bag and I absolutely loved how it looked with my more formal look. Picnic or to the party, this is such an adorable bag. 
Now on to one of the hottest sandal trends out there for the summer, the H sandal from The Drop. And this is such a chic and easy option. And it's one of the most popular slides out there for two reasons. Number one, I mean, check out this really cushy footbed, right? So much more comfortable than the average flip-flop. And number two, the style. The H style we have seen absolutely everywhere. And what I think is so great about these is they go with everything. I mean, I love this fabulous metallic and this patent orange. I mean, bright's one of the biggest trends we're seeing this season. And of course, the classic white. I think a great idea is to leave these by the door and no matter where you're going, you slide on into these and you're gonna look chic. So next, we've got a mega trend when it comes to hair accessories today, the claw clip. And yes, as you have probably heard, the 90s are having quite the moment in the fashion and accessories world these days. But these little claw clips from H&M aren't your average 90s throwback. First of all, they come in a set of four, and I think they're so beautiful, actually pretty glamorous, which is not something you hear in relationship with claw clips every day. And what I think makes them so special is these beautiful materials. I mean, we have a faux tortoise shell and even faux mother of pearl and even almost like the great resin Bakelite from the 50s that we've seen so much of out there in accessories this season. And then they're even elevated with little pops of gold. And you can choose between four different colorways here. And they're so easy to use. You just clamp them in. And you can wear them in lots of different ways. I mean, you can wear a couple on one side. I love that. You could wear one on either side, kind of as you would a bobby pin or a barrette. Or go for all four and do a fun 90s inspired updo. On to another accessory trend, jewelry. Now, first up, we've got earrings, and Juicy Fruit is the epitome of summer, and this vitamin C set is as festive as it is fabulous. I mean, believe it or not, fruit has been a big jewelry trend for the past two seasons, and I absolutely love it. It's so fresh and fun, and I always appreciate an accessory with a sense of humor, right? These are really, really fun. So you can choose between five sets that include all of your favorite fruits. You can choose between sparkly grapes and cherries, lemons, pineapples, bananas, oranges, tangerines, and more. Now you can wear them as a matching pair, right? Or why not mix and match the fruits? You can do a cherry on one ear and a tangerine on the other. Or if you have multiple piercings, you can even look like you've got a glamorous summer fruit basket on your ear. <laughs> and they also make really adorable and affordable gifts. They come in this little gift box and they're great for teens or adults. Next, bracelets. And this sheet collection comes ready for the party. The arm party, that is. <laughs> yes, the layering AK party trend is having quite a moment when it comes to jewelry this season. And we are here for this trend. I love it. You know, more is more, right? So this set comes with four of the moment gold colored bracelets that give that arm party in an instant. It includes two chunky chain bracelets. Yay, I love chains. You guys have heard it here. Chains are a massive trend one pretty cable style bracelet, and one simple classic bangle. So you can wear these all together, or you can wear them on their own, or you can even invite pieces you already own to the party. And don't be afraid to mix and match metals. I love gold and silver and rose gold together. And they have a not to believe price. You get all four for under $10. What a steal. Plus they have a classic look that works with any style. Now, over the past few seasons, we've seen a real focus on the waist, and I'm obsessed with these chic wide belts from H&M. They give you that perfect summertime cinch, plus they bring in another big trend that we've been seeing, crochet and woven materials. You know those really wide belts in leather that have been so popular, you know, in the fall and winter? Those are great, but they can be really heavy when the temperatures heat up. And I love a big square buckle. 
This buckle detail you're gonna be seeing absolutely everywhere this summer. And this belt is a little bit over two inches wide and it's made extra long, which I think looks so fabulous hanging down. Or you can always just tuck it in the back for a more tailored look. And I love to use these wider belts to sort of cinch in and give a new look to those oversized shirts that have been such a big trend. Also, a wide belt is really flattering because it cinches in and shows off our waists. And this belt is under $20. So lastly, let's finish up with one of our favorite beauty accessories. And trust me when I tell you, we are not alone in our exuberance for this extensive set. Now this is the BS Mall 14 piece makeup brush set and it is a serious bestseller with over 96,000 ratings on Amazon. I mean, that's one of the highest ratings I've ever come across. And here's why shoppers are so obsessed with these. So first of all, you get a comprehensive collection of 14 makeup brushes. That's amazing, that's under a dollar a piece. So you really can apply makeup like a pro because you've got the right tool for the job, which I have found over the years makes a huge difference in my makeup application. And this set comes with everything from eyebrow, eyeshadow, and eyeliner brushes to lip brushes to blending and contouring and highlighting brushes and more. Plus, they're really pretty. I mean, look at the rose gold. And you know that saying there's an app for that? <laughs> Well, with this set, you can be sure that there's a brush for that, no matter the makeup look you're trying to achieve. And lastly, I am such a big fan of this case. Look, it's great for traveling. You put the two pieces together, throw it in your bag. But I also like that you can use it as we've done here. You can break it apart and use it to store your makeup brushes on your counter. And it is always so much easier having all of your brushes right in front of you rather than having to dig through your makeup bag. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. So we've got the Zara Rattan box shape bag, the drop flat sandal, the H&M hair claws, the vitamin C fruit basket stud earrings, the dainty bracelet set, the braided waist belt, and the 14 piece makeup brush set. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then, it's homemade granola with a savory twist. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you. But an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of personally speaking for myself, I will opt for chocolate every single time. I know you have a little canister of oats sitting at the back of your pantry that maybe you're neglecting a little bit, but instead of teaching you how to make a traditional bowl of oatmeal, which I already know you know how to make, I'm gonna show you how to hashtag upgrade your oats. Today we're going to be making my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with some added fun, coconut, and then a really easy savory granola. How's that for a plot twist? Let's get started. Oats, they are having a moment. 
they're everywhere these days. And for good reason. Oats are super versatile, they're really nutritious, and there's so much you can do with an oat to make it a star. But there are a lot of different varieties, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of my favorites. Welcome to my kitchen classroom. On today's agenda, Oats 101. These little guys are oat groats. I know, it's not the cutest name, but these are oats in their least processed form. They have a lot of fiber. And these are what they look like before they've been rolled out. They do take a bit longer to cook though, about 30 to 40 minutes, but they have a really nice nutty and chewy texture, which I find is really nice for a salad, similar to a barley or a farro. Next up, we've got my steel cut oats. These are simply oat groats that have been cut into this pinhead shape. Now, steel cut oats take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. They've got a nice chewy texture, making it perfect for a slow weekend morning when you want to enjoy a bowl of oatmeal. Next up, we have got my oat MVP, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. These oats have been steamed and then rolled out into that iconic oat shape. These take only 10 to 20 minutes to cook, not too long, not too short, but they also have this really nice springy light texture without being too chewy. I find that old fashioned oats are perfect for just about anything. An oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, some granola. I use them so much in my kitchen. And finally, we have our instant oatmeal. These are the most processed form of oats from our little lineup here and what you commonly find in a little brown packet destined for your microwave. These are very mushy in texture, so I don't really cook with them or bake with them. But if you only have about one to three minutes in the morning to cook them, these are the oats for you. I won't judge you if you use them. When you're always stocked with oats, guess what you'll never run out of? Oat milk. Because that's right, you can make it yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to make your own oat milk at home is some old fashioned oats, some cold water, and a good quality nut milk bag. When you're making your own oat milk, make sure to use old fashioned oats. Steel cut is gonna be a little bit too coarse and instant is gonna be too mushy. So we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup for my old fashioned oats. I'll measure some out. Old fashioned oats secured. My blender is my BFF and this oat milk comes together just in your blender. I'm gonna add my old fashioned oats to my blender. We've got some cold water, make sure it's cold. We don't want any warm water here because the oats will get slimy. Nobody likes the slimy oat milk. Adding this in my blender. And finally, this is optional, but not if you're me, because I like a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of maple syrup. You can totally use a couple medjool dates too if you'd prefer. Just a touch. You can even add a little dash of cinnamon too if you're feeling like you want to live on the edge today with your oat milk. Now, all I'm gonna do is blend it. Only 30 to 40 seconds. We don't want to over blend it because the oats will get kind of mushy. Okay, here we go. Oat milk is in our future. We're looking nice and creamy. Now, before I remove this from the blender, just want to show you, you can totally use a cheesecloth to strain, but I'm using a nut milk bag because it's a lot easier. I'm gonna prepare this in my pitcher. Now I'm just gonna pour in my oat milk. We're making oat milk. You just wanna squeeze it a little bit so you get all of that oat milk out. This is precious, we worked hard for this. Okay, we didn't really work that hard for this, but we still wanna get everything out. Look at how creamy that looks too. Like that's some thick oat milk, I love it. And look at how this nut milk bag is catching all of those little pieces of oats. We don't want that in our oat milk. We want that to stay secure in the bag. That's why it's nice to get a good quality nut milk bag, because then it makes it super easy to make your oat milk at home. All right, we're gonna set this aside. See you later. And now, we have homemade, creamy, delicious oat milk. This stores well in the fridge for about five days. Make sure you stir it before you drink it because separation is totally normal. I like to use this oat milk in any recipe where I call for a non-dairy milk, whether that be in my chocolate chip cookie pie or even my date crumble bars. 
so delicious, so creamy, it's even amazing in your coffee. And you know what pairs really well with oat milk? Cookies. Luckily, I've got myself covered because we're gonna make my chocolate chip oatmeal cookies with a little bit of coconut. I'm gonna let this chill while I go grab the ingredients. I have been there and done that with traditional stovetop oatmeal and overnight oats. Plus, I would choose a cookie over those two any day. So to solve my persistent desire for cookies at all hours of the day, I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's wholesome enough to eat for breakfast. So let's get to it. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have also lined my pan with some parchment paper. Now, we're gonna get to work on the wet ingredients. I'm gonna crack my egg in my bowl. Whisk that really nicely. We want no separation between the yolks and the whites. Okay. This looks great. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. Mixing the egg and the almond butter together really well. All right, this looks smooth and creamy. Now I'm going in with my melted and cooled coconut oil. Straight in there. We are actually going to be adding some shredded coconut into these cookies, so I find that the coconut oil really complements that super well. It's also a nice butter replacement in these cookies too. Mixing everything together. Everyone needs to become friendly. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. Can't have my cookies without it. And finally, for my sweeteners, maple going in. Maple adds that really warm and almost breakfasty taste to these cookies. And then we're adding some coconut sugar. Coconut sugar and maple syrup are my favorite sweeteners to use together. I find that they complement each other really well. They create this really golden taste in these cookies. Because coconut sugar is really fragrant, it's gonna go really nicely with that coconut oil and that shredded coconut that we're gonna be adding into the cookies later. My wet mixture looks perfect, honestly. I have to give credit to myself. Now, I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. For these cookies, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. If you don't know what oat flour is, get ready to have your mind blown. All it is, is just oats ground up into a blender until you get that fine powder, like a flour. Then we get oat flour. How fun and convenient is that? Easy to make at home, you can also buy it from the store. Oat flour going in. We're having an oat moment with these cookies. We love oats. Gonna also add some almond flour. 
Almond flour is really dense, oat flour is really light, so I find that they create a really nice combination and a really nice texture in these cookies. Okay, we're gonna whisk that up. Whisking our almond flour and our oat flour together really nicely. And now, because I'm fun, I'm gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you buy unsweetened shredded coconut because we've got the sugar already, we don't need to add more into our coconut. Now, for our star. These would not be oatmeal chocolate chip cookies without some oats. So, I'm using old fashioned or rolled oats here. Oats going in. Time for a little baking powder. And a little pinch of salt. The salt is gonna balance out the sweetness, really bring it out, it's gonna heighten all of those flavors. Whisking everything together nicely, we want a fully incorporated dry ingredient mixture here. Dry mixture taking a journey. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold my dry and wet ingredients together until everyone is fully incorporated. So we want to make sure we're not seeing any remnants of that flour mixture, right? We want it to be fully incorporated. We'll see how that color changes. Everyone looks really nicely incorporated, really well mixed, thorough. We want to do a thorough job here. I mean, listen, this is like this is like a bowl of oatmeal, right? This counts, a cookie, an oatmeal cookie, same thing. Okay, this is controversial. I'm going to put my spatula down for this. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally, speaking for myself. Um, I will opt for chocolate every single time. So, I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. I measure chocolate chips with my soul, as you can see. I will be saving these to top the cookies with before they go into the oven. I want a few more. I changed my mind. Just a few. Breakfast, anyone? <laughs> okay, we're gonna fold the chocolate in really nicely. And this is a beautiful cookie dough situation I've got here. Okay. Time to make our cookies. Perfect. I'm using a cookie scoop here just to get some nice, even cookies. Want them all to be about the same size and then they're gonna cook evenly too. That is a huge chunk of chocolate chips I just got. I'm not mad about it at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my fingers just to flatten them down slightly. Not too much, just a little. This one has so many chocolate chips, that's the one I'm going for. I already know this. I've already made up my mind. I like making these cookies at the start of the week because I'm eating them for breakfast. It's kind of nice to have on hand. And even if you have a different breakfast, okay? Even if you're having your eggs or whatever else you eat for breakfast, you can totally have one of these after with a little cup of coffee. How does that sound? Pretty good? I know, because I do it all the time. You know what these remind me of also? Just like a really glam granola bar. Like a granola bar, but like make it a cookie. I've got some extra dough here. I will be baking these off later, but I do want to add a couple extra chocolate chips on top for fun. I went pretty heavy on the chocolate chips and the dough already. And I honestly love that for me. I'm gonna bake these in the oven 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown around those edges. I'm so excited to have some oatmeal breakfast cookies after this.
cookies for breakfast, anyone? I mean, look at how textured they are, right? They've got the oats, they've got the chocolate chips, they've got coconut. There's a lot going on here. Perfect for breakfast, but also for any time of the day. I'm not gonna you know, say that I can't have this after dinner, because I can. I'm so excited to eat them. And you know what I'm gonna eat them with? Some homemade oat milk, because I'm having an oat moment today. And I'm just gonna have all of the oats. I mean, look at that. So fluffy. You know what this needs? You know what this needs? It needs to be dunked in some oat milk. It just has to happen. Okay. I gotta get my camera out first because this is a perfect photo op. All right, taking the plunge. <sighs> oh my God, okay. All right, here we go. I'm so good, I'm just losing cookies everywhere. Okay, I need a sip of oat milk. You might, and no disrespect to your bowl of oatmeal, but you might want to abandon it after you try these cookies. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. I'm going in for more. Mmm. Someone hold me back. No, really, someone hold me back. Oh, you thought I was done helping you upgrade your oats? Well, you are mistaken because up next, I have my plot twist savory granola. I'm super excited to make it. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. When you think of granola, you're probably thinking of those sweet clusters of nuts and oats to top your yogurt. But have you ever thought about a savory version? I know it's a plot twist, but savory granola is one of my favorite snacks. I was inspired to make it by traditional Indian snack mixes, and I cannot wait for you to try it. We want the savory granola to have lots of flavor, so to start, we're gonna make a little olive oil spice mixture. In my bowl, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, Olive oil is gonna help us get that nice, crisp, golden color and texture that we really want. Now, for some more flavor, I'm gonna add some coconut aminos. Coconut aminos going straight in there. Coconut aminos are made from the sap of coconut palms, and it's actually very similar in taste to a soy sauce, but it's gluten-free, so if that's important to you, there you go. We always have to have spice. I always have to have spice. I can't live my life without it. So we're gonna add a couple of my favorites. Cayenne. Cayenne is gonna add some heat, some spice. It's gonna really kick this flavor up a notch. Now I'm gonna add some garam masala. The garam masala is a very common Indian spice blend. It contains pepper, cumin, cloves. It's super warming, super fragrant. I love using it in my savory granola. 
Gonna add a little pinch of salt. Nothing is complete without a little pinch of salt. And now because we have a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, a lot of savory elements going on here, I wanna add a little bit of honey just to balance out that saltiness. I love honey. Just a touch, not too much. That honey is gonna give that really nice, sweet and salty balance that I love so much. Now let's whisk everything together. Make sure it's really well incorporated. We want all of the spice, all of the flavor to be evenly, evenly whisked together. It's pretty potent. <laughs> all right, this is nice and well mixed. Now I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. I like using a variety of nuts and seeds here because it's really fun to play with different texture and flavor. Every single nut and seed has a different flavor profile, so it's fun to add them all together and just have a little crunch, a little texture, something different in every bite. So, I'm gonna start with my sliced almonds. I use almonds so much in my kitchen, from almond butter to raw almonds. They're super versatile and I just love the taste. I'm gonna add some raw cashews, super buttery and delicious. Now, we're gonna go for some pecans. Pecan, pecan. I say pecan. In there. I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. You can add sunflower seeds here too if pumpkin's not your jam. Pumpkin seeds add that nice green color too. It's kind of pretty. Okay, now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. These are gonna be so delicious when they're nice and toasty in the oven. Mm, I love it. Now, this wouldn't be granola without oats. You cannot have granola without our oats. Adding the oats straight into my mixture. Now we mix them all together. Make sure that you're using raw, unsalted nuts here. We are gonna be roasting them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, so you don't need to buy roasted and salted nuts. Look at how fun and textured this is. So many different colors. And it's about to get a lot of flavor. Time to add my olive oil mixture straight on top of my nuts, seeds, and oats. Leave no spice left behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Now we're gonna mix everything together. We want a very well-spiced, savory granola. So every piece has to be coated by some olive oil and spice. It already starts to smell so good, so flavorful. This is such a fun and easy portable snack too. We are looking nice and well mixed. Now it's time for the pan. Make sure you get all of those little resistant oats. They'll have a better life as savory granola. Okay, make sure that you're spreading your granola out really well, really evenly. We want everyone to have personal space, some room to breathe. This way we can ensure a nice and even crisp bake. We are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake this 45 to 50 minutes at 325 degrees in the oven. Make sure you toss it every 10 minutes or so to ensure that it gets nice and golden brown. Look at my gorgeous golden savory granola. I've let this cool completely. Make sure you let it cool for at least 15 minutes. First of all, it's a little bit too hot to handle as it comes out of the oven. And when you cool granola, it crisps up as it cools. I'm gonna store this in my cute little container, which I promise I can get the lid off because I'm strong. There we go. I love to store these in little mason jars or little jars like this, just so it's nice to have a snack on hand. So the next time you are craving a potato chip or a cracker, this is just a more unique and fun, savory snack to snack on. You've got a lot of different flavors. You can customize it with your favorite nuts and seeds as well. So whatever you have in the pantry, you've got some sunflower seeds, you've got some walnuts, feel free to sub that in. Look at that nice golden color. So good. I've got most of my savory granola into my little jar. And you know what I also like to do with this? 
I like to put it on a salad. Think of this as the fun cousin to your croutons. Yeah, they're your, your crouton cousins. Crunchy, savory, really pretty. You've got those nuts and seeds and you've also got a lot of flavor there. Look how nice that looks. This is a super simple salad. I just did a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. This granola though, it adds a secret touch. Mmm! It's so good. It's so salty, but it's got heat and flavor. Wait, I need more. Like you've got so many things going on, right? Different nuts and seeds. Gives it a lot more texture. Makes it more interesting to eat. You've got something new in every bite. I mean, have you ever seen a salad topped with granola before? I think I have to document it. I mean, look at that, it looks so pretty. Croutons? I don't know you. I mean, come on. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Sweet granola, I'm coming for you. I hope this has inspired you to upgrade your oats if you're neglecting them in your pantry. Let them live, let them live as savory granola, as some delicious oatmeal cookies. Oats are really an MVP. Hello, hello, welcome to The Boost. We are gonna start your day off with some positivity. So we're gonna share stories that are sure to warm your heart and hopefully leave you with a smile. We start with stories from our special series, Today on the Move. And to kick things off, we tapped a remarkable young man spreading joy in an unlikely place, the subway. So I joined him for an unforgettable day beneath the streets of New York. Check it out. It's a little bit nerve-wracking setting up my board in hand, my bag in the other hand, walking into a platform full of people looking the opposite direction. But then as soon as I set the board down, get my shoes on, the nerves are automatically gone. I'm connecting with the audience. And tap dancer Jaboen Dixon has chosen one of the toughest audiences in the world, the millions of riders of the New York City subway system. In New York, everybody has a mission and somewhere they're going, something to do, someplace to be. So I have to be a dynamic enough part of the city that it makes them want to stop and be like, oh, let me, let me stop and experience this New York experience right now in the moment. But Jaboen's story didn't start in the city of New York. It started in the city of Chicago, where he grew up tap dancing with his family. And then his longtime girlfriend, Nicole, got a part in the Broadway show Six, and he followed her to New York to support her dream while auditioning for his big break as well. My options were a job that you can do like right away, you know, do like a waiter type of thing or like a bartender. Or I was like, I can take my art and bring it straight to the people and see what happens from that. And what has happened is something extraordinary. Connections with commuters, shy smiles from children who then jump in to learn, and sometimes, like today, a full-on dance party with a middle school from Houston, Texas. Okay, you know what? I just witnessed some magic. Yeah. I just witnessed some subway yeah. magic. I'm down here bringing the tap to the people. What was going on with you and the crowd? That was the exchange that happens a lot down here. How do you capture someone's attention in all the chaos down here? You just kind of have to be able to connect with them fast enough for them to want to connect with you, you know? This is like a communication without any words. Yeah, You're yeah. Just doing it. That's what tap is, to be honest. It's a conversation, you know? So if I can give you a little rhythm with my feet and that captures you enough, that's, uh, that's the goal right there. And I had a goal myself. I wanted Jaboen to teach me how to make my own magic in the subways. Okay. So I want you to give me two steps, but then we're gonna clap. So it's just like a right, left, stepping clap. both feet and then a clap. 
Yeah, you know, kind of like a We Will Rock You type of thing, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Soon I was shuffle ball changing as well as, okay, maybe these sweet tourists from Iowa. And the big finish comes what when we put it together. In five, six, seven, eight, step, step, clap, step, step, clap. Shuffle step, uh, shuffle step, uh, toe toe, heel heel, step, step, step. Yes. And then the bow, though, and then the bow. You gotta finish with a bow, you know? <laughs> By the way, you are so magnificent. Thank you, thank you. You are, you are full of like joy and positivity and all the things that are needed everywhere. Even in all the noise underneath the streets of New York City, Jaboen brings the light. Coming up next, Al Roker on the move with bus operators right here in New York City to celebrate the men and women who get us where we need to go. All this while Al was honoring the memory of his father and the job he held for more than 20 years. In the city that never sleeps, the nation's largest bus fleet doesn't either. More than 10,000 city bus operators work transporting New Yorkers across all five boroughs. And the driving lineup includes David Lugo, Louis Jimenez, Bernadine Kamwanya, and Cleveland October. Longtime bus operators in the Big Apple, a job my dad was proud to hold for over two decades. I wore this suit because this was the color of my dad's bus uniform. I mean, he took great pride in it. What is it about being an MTA bus driver that elicits that pride? The responsibilities of the lives mm -hmm. that you have in your hands. Having them people entrust you. I love the people. I love helping people. I like taking people places, mm -hmm. especially the seniors. They say, I was waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find each of these operators doing what they love in different parts of the city. Together, they have nearly 90 years of experience picking up passengers. David works at the Jackie Gleason Depot in Brooklyn. My dad drove out of there as well. When I was off from school, he'd take me on the bus with him. And at the end of his run, you know, we'd be in a parking lot and he'd let me, let me steer no the bus. You know, I'd sit on, literally sit on his lap and he'd let me steer the bus. What are the memories you have with your kids on the bus? When they ran all the way to the back and seen how long the bus was. When you first started, you stand next to the bus and you say, I'm going to drive this. <laughs> <laughs> they will come in. I will wave at people on different stops because they were like, Poppy, everybody knows you. Okay. I'd be like, this is my route and you know this is how I work and it's a it's a good feeling there was this two-way street of pride I was so proud to see my dad mm. doing this and I think he was proud to see me see him doing that yes that's the best while these operators get to drive buses with air conditioning and even USB charging ports there isn't the change makers anymore though. thank God <laughs> The bus I rode on with my dad in the 60s, well, missing just a few upgrades. We got to take a trip down memory lane, thanks to the New York Transit Museum, who takes care of this vintage fleet. So guys, this is the bus I remember riding on with my dad. Oh. I would literally sit over either this seat or this seat. There was a place in Brooklyn uh, called Goody's Luncheonette. Mm. And, uh, he would get me some yoo-hoos. I'd sit here and I'd see people coming in and uh, hey, Mr. Roker, and he'd introduce me to his favorite passengers. The passengers, the best part of the job, not only for my dad, but for these proud New Yorkers who wake up every day with a passion to serve. You've got regular passengers to the point where if you don't see them for a little bit, uh, mm. is there a concern? Yes, it happens all the time. Especially when you have school kids. And if I don't see them, I wonder. And if the next time I see them, I'm like, what happened to you? Are you okay? I said, okay, as long as you're fine, that's good. How important do you feel your job is to your community? It's important because when emergency comes, we are called and buses don't stop. Whenever it's a situation, we are called upon to go ahead and, and help. In a way, I, it sounds like your passengers, it's almost like family. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Coming up, a grand tribute to the role of grandmothers, the role they play in our lives, coming up after the break.
Welcome back to The Boost. Grandmothers hold a special place in so many families, and in Hispanic homes, the abuela is often the MVP. Now, thanks to social media, she is finally getting her time in the spotlight. Tom Yamas has that story. There's a new star on social media, and let's just say she's old school. Who on God, baby Jesus? He's not supposed to be born yet. Going viral and hitting very close to home for Hispanics. Life is like a butter container. You never know what you're going to get. The character Abuela, which means grandmother in Spanish, is the brainchild of actor and producer Jenny Lorenzo, an homage to her real life Cuban abuela. It's funny because when I would meet my friends' abuelas, I'm like, y'all are the same. What is going on? Abuela's appeal comes from a shared experience. For so many Hispanics, the grandmother plays an integral and daily role in raising the grandkids. A lot of it is just in the facial expressions, um, especially her judgment stare. Yeah. It's just like, you know, just pierced right through your soul. Um, and Abuela is not the only inspiration for laughs. Another handle, Abuela's Counter, is gaining likes by helping followers recreate their grandmother's favorite recipes. So basically, it comes from an idea. We started working together in COVID, just passing recipes together and just trying to keep alive, you know, all the traditions that we that we grew up with. So we're going to fry up some croquetas. Created by some Annie Mezerhain and Cristina and Bustamante, croquetas. the page shows followers how to cook everything from medianoche sliders to flan, even the perfect cafecito, just like Abuela made it. It's more than a cookbook, it's an experience. A place where people could go and they could sort of connect with their past, but also show their kids and the next generation the culture. Every time I cook now, I just feel like a little piece of her is with me and I can pass that on to my kids. And I think that that's always what she wanted. <laughs> with all this love for grandmothers, we thought we would invite over Abuela to Abuela's counter. How does it smell? Does it smell like it's going to be tasting good? Ay, huele riquísimo. Esas niñas, yo sé que sus abuelas le enseñaron a cocinar. But will you kind of tell them if something's a little too salty or you, you'll tell them? Sí, yo no tengo pelo con la lengua. Yeah. Sí. <laughs> and it turns out Abuela's counter is Abuela approved. Pressure. No. Qué rico. Yes. I was nervous. I was nervous. And as the spirit of abuelas, past and present, lives on, so does their responsibilities. Something my own mom, now an abuela herself, shared with me. Do you feel the responsibility of sort of the keeper of the family legend, the keeper of Definitely. the family customs, the keeper of Definitely. all the history from, from Cuba up until now? Definitely. I do. I start instilling the love of Cuba and and the love of this country that has opened all its doors to respect your country above all and to never forget where you come from. All right, there's nothing like grandma's cooking. And if you have fond memories of yours in the kitchen, we've got a place that will make you feel right at home. Donna Farazin takes us to the Italian restaurant on Staten Island, serving up love in every dish. From the moment I arrived at Enoteca Maria, I knew I was in for a treat. Surrounded by grandmas. I had the honor of meeting premier chefs Maria, Dolly, and Maral. But we are not chefs, we are just grandmothers. But grandmothers are the best chefs. Who say they like our culture. You know what they say, grandma knows best. The best of the Right? <laughs> the grandmothers, each from a different country. Maria from Italy, Dolly from Sri Lanka, and Maral from Azerbaijan. What is your favorite dish to make? I make a lasagna, make a mibola, make a rabbit, I make so much fish. The Staten Island Eatery is open for dinner three nights a week. It features a fixed, regular Italian menu and a rotating lineup of nonnas, Italian for grandmother, cooking up their culture's cuisine. This is very famous in Sri Lanka for breakfast when they have dinners, parties. 
they make this. Feeding yeah. people, whether yeah. it's guests or customers, that is, what does that mean to you in your culture? Happy. Happy. I'm very happy. And what has it added for you in your life? Friends. Friends. And then happiness. Meeting people. Many times these uh, women are empty nesters, their husbands have passed away, uh, their children have moved out. So uh, they're really looking for an outlet uh, and they have it here. Restaurant owner Jody Scaravella started the project to honor his own Italian heritage and his nonna, mother and sister who have all passed away. It was grief driven. I had no business plan. I had no experience. I never even worked in a restaurant. No idea what I was doing, and uh, so it just kind of unfolded. Jody opened his doors in 2007, and shortly after opened his kitchen to the nonas of the world with rave reviews. Any grandmas with home cooking, it, it appeals to me. I had to get the lasagna because I love Italian food. Everybody, they kiss me, they want to make a photograph of what you need. You know, everybody said, I love you, I'll come again, I want to see you again. Beautiful. And for these nonas, cooking is in their genes. You all learned how to cook from a very young age from your parents. Uh, yeah. My mother always say, do for me, learn for yourself. Yeah. You're going to need this in future. And you're not just doing it for you now. You're doing it for all I, the customers, yeah, for, for everyone who comes in. My son, they like to cook. And yeah, your son likes my to cook. My son, gonna oh, ask forget about it. Kids. My uh, uh, granddaughter. She was even about three, three years, and she cracked her eggs like professional. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. What do you like today? Yeah. Um, I do lamb stew, dolma. It's good. Dolma! Yeah. My grandma makes dolma! With all the love in the room, I had to get my own Nona on the line. Hi, Ashy! Ashy, I miss you. I miss you so much. I'm with Hi, my grandma. You? I'm a grandma. <laughs> I'm a mom Is with you. Maria Vain Moral. Turns out my own Nona and Moral share a common language, Azari. Manam Adam Moral, this is Haral, this is. I can understand that. I'll see you soon, Ashi Nancy. I love you. There are three different cultures, but what do you have in common? Friendship. The frost Friendship. Love. Friendship, yes. Good food. Good food. Good food. Italian food. Why, Mari? Why, Mari? When does one not your best? So
We are back on the boost, shining a light on a fisherman who decided to use his kayak as a makeshift garbage truck. And he's built a big following, making a big difference. Here's Joe Fryer. So we're down here at the beautiful Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio. Beautiful. I think she's beautiful, you know, and uh, it's got its problems, but every day we're out here trying to make it even more beautiful. For Eddie Olshansky, the road to beauty runs through water. All right, we're in search of garbage. We sure are. Navigated by kayak as we comb the river's banks for trash. All right, got my garbage bag. There you go. And how about one of these? Got I my bestow grabber. Bestow upon you a grabber. All right. Try not to lose it. Our search does not take long. What do you find in there? We got a beer can, a couple of water bottles, and just some big chunks of styrofoam. For Eddie, this cleanup is more than the occasional volunteer project. As the founder of an organization called Trash Fish, he's out here at least five days a week, and often he's not alone. I feel confident. I feel really motivated and pumped to help the environment out today. With help from social media, Eddie has recruited a school of trash fish to help. There's no money in picking up trash, I promise you that. But without us, I think this river system is far worse off. The Cuyahoga has a notorious past known decades ago as the Burning River. It was so polluted with oil and waste, it caught fire more than a dozen times. Such environmental disasters led to the creation of the EPA in 1970 and shortly after the Clean Water Act. While flames are no longer a concern, trash is. You see, the Cuyahoga flows directly into Lake Erie, the water source for about 12 million people. This river, this section of this river is the last chance we have to stop this stuff before it actually gets into our drinking water. Eddie redirects some of that stuff. 30 pounds of basketballs. To his garage. This is part of some of my collection of what I think is interesting stuff that I've pulled out of the river over the last couple of years. He's found balls, toys, and just a couple years ago, this decades old Pepsi can. That just tells me that all the plastic that we put in there today is gonna be there in 50 years, it's gonna be there in 100 years, it's probably gonna be there in 1,000 years. He brings these items to his speaking engagements, including yeah, right? these old aerosol cans, which look more like modern art. When stuff like this ends up in the river and it gets punctured, underwater all that foam comes out and this is what it solidifies as. The most concerning things he finds, tiny beads of plastic called nurdles. They're the building blocks of almost all plastic products, often confused for food by marine life. Uh, Joe, here's our first nurdle of the day. Oh, you already found a nurdle? Certainly did. It never takes long. We find them all over, even in a plastic oh, soda bottle. What do you think's also in there? Nurdles? There's a bunch of nurdles in here. You got nurdles in there. But like a drop in the ocean, bit by bit, Eddie and his trash fish are making waves by cleaning up the river. How amazed are you by the things you see in the water? Oh, I can't even make up the stuff that we find. Eddie estimates since he started in 2015, they've reeled in nearly 100,000 pounds of trash. I do feel like you're making a difference, and I think everybody does their part that you can chip away at it a little bit. Every bit counts, right? Every bit counts. And that is what keeps Eddie fishing for trash. Does this feel like your life's work now? It sure is at this point. I, I don't think that I intended for it to be when I first started doing this, but if you were out here every day seeing what I see and you knew the people in this community, you'd want to be out here every day too, I think. From one man making an impact to another, meet Zero Waste Daniel. This up-and-coming designer is making sustainable fashion cool, and our girl Donna headed to Brooklyn to meet him. What I specialize in is best night of your life clothes. Don't you wear Zero Waste Daniel and think you're not gonna get stopped on the street. I am sold. I want the best <laughs> night of my life. <laughs> meet designer Daniel Silverstein, who is taking sustainable fashion to a lively and stylish new level. 150 billion items of clothing are created every year. 60% of our clothing has some sort of form of plastic in it. And fashion is the second largest polluter of clean water in the world. Brands like Zero Waste Daniel are getting it right in the sense that they're thinking about fashion from a really intentional place, from farming the textiles, manufacturing, and to retail as well. While the brand itself is only a decade old, this has been a lifelong passion project for Daniel. 
Tell me about the first time you fell in love with fashion. I fell in love with fashion at a very young age. I'm also a little brother to an older sister who had a collection of Barbies. After seeing whatever movie or the Olympics or a play, I would come home and remake what I had just seen out of anything in the house. All the tissues, a whole roll of tin foil, and finally, at maybe five years old, my mom said, I will take you to a fabric store. That's really where this all began for me. In school, I saw all of the mountains of scraps being thrown away, and I knew from childhood that there were other end uses for these things. What really worked for my business was breaking into factories, stealing their scraps, and showing people what I could do with it. It makes so much sense that Zero Waste Daniel cut through the noise because it wasn't just another sweat pant line, it was about solving a problem. In addition to his sweats and tees, Daniel's creations range from custom wedding gowns to avant-garde drag costumes. You're telling a story with the process of creating these clothes as well. My happiness doesn't come from my bank account. The happiness is in watching someone's eyes light up when they see their reflection wearing one of these pieces. Watching the light bulb go off over a student's head as they realize they could reinterpret materials in a way that they never thought of before. Then it was time to get scrappy. We're going to cut and sew at the same time. And these little scraps are going to come down the chute and end up in our reuse bin. And we go through this over and over and over. So there really is zero waste. Yeah, I feel like the main thing for me personally is that gratification of knowing that this was something that someone saw as trash and time and energy and expertise turned it into something beautiful. Is there someone that you are dreaming of dressing? Probably the person I would love to see wearing Zero Waste Daniel the most would be like Lil Nas X. You recently had a collaboration with Fran Drescher, who is another fashion icon. That was a really full circle moment for me because I felt like, as a kid, Fran Fine, I felt so much kinship with that character because I was the one wearing the loud outfits in my house. And to be dressing someone who inspired me to express myself through fashion was such an honor. While Daniel's relatively small operation has already reached impressive heights, he knows it's just the beginning for his mission. How hopeful are you that future generations will follow in this sustainable clothing lead? When I was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology, sustainability was a club. Now it's a major at most design schools. So I'm really optimistic that the next generation of designers is being educated to think this way and that the people who discouraged me from pursuing this are retiring. So I'm thinking that the future is pretty bright. Just ahead, we're gonna put a smile on your face with the latest viral video. That's right after the break.
welcome back to The Boost. We have one more video that is sure to boost your day. Take a look. An Atlanta man named Tito has always considered the University of Georgia his dream school. He did not get a chance to go there, but he's such a huge fan, and he's been supporting the Bulldogs his entire life. So, when his teen daughter decided she was going to enroll at Georgia, she wanted to surprise her dad with the big news. So she gave him a Bulldog t-shirt, and you can watch what happens. Thank you, babe. Is that you want to join? You want to join? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, that's it. The surprise by Tito to tears. Oh, um, my word. That's Can you imagine? Oh. The next best thing, or even maybe the better thing, he's going to be at the football game. Oh, yeah. We're going to look for him in the stadium. Yeah, what she doesn't know is every weekend is going to be parents' weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'll do it for us for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more of our favorite feel-good stories. So we will see you next time right here on Today All Day. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day Accessories for All. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock, and we are back today with a new episode of Shop All Day, all about accessories for everybody in the family. Accessories may be small, but they can make a big impact. We've rounded out some of our favorite picks that are instantly gonna upgrade your wardrobe, home, and your life. We've got everything from a simple style solution for your Apple Watch to a chic rattan bag that is a must have for summer. And see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop everything we're sharing with you today. Okay, so if you're in the market for a classic bag that you're gonna use year round, look no further. This L.L. Bean Tote might be as good as it gets for a bag that marries style and utility. The Bowden Tote open top bag is made with a sturdy canvas that can withstand the elements, whether you're on the beach, commuting to work, or traveling. It comes in a bunch of different sizes, so you can choose from regular or long straps too, which is my favorite part, and you can get it monogrammed, so everybody in the family can get their own. And the folks at L.L. Bean promise that their bag can hold up to 500 pounds, which sounds crazy, but when these bags came out in about 1944, they were originally used as ice carriers, so they are really built to last. And whether you're toting around your L.L. Bean bag, your travel bag, or a laptop bag, you're gonna want a Clippa bag hanger. Here is why. Unlike other purse hooks, you won't have to dig around because you keep it on the strap. It is so lightweight, and according to the brand, it is strong enough to hold 33 pounds. And according to the brand, thanks to a thin design and these non-slip foot pads on the ends, you only need half an inch for this to work its magic. That means you can hang your bag off thin edges, ledges, rails, and openings. And you're not limited to a flat surface, and that kind of versatility makes it a must-have for every bag. And whether you're working from home, heading to the office, the Shop Today team loves these puffy laptop sleeves from Bagu. We take our devices on the go everywhere, and the quilted cases actually come in a bunch of different colors, patterns, and three different sizes to cover everything from your tablet to your laptop, even your e-readers. These are amazing as an added layer of protection in your tote bag, in your backpack, and in case of any spills, the brand says that these are machine washable, which is great when you're on the go. And the designs are so cute. Okay, and let's talk about the trend that keeps on getting. I am talking about the fanny pack. It is stylish, functional, and an accessory you'll use nonstop all summer long. Lululemon's best-selling everywhere belt bag came out recently and it became so popular that the brand launched an extended strap size to be more inclusive. It makes it easier to wear however you want, whether it's a classic waist belt, a crossbody, or a shoulder bag style, but the design of the bag itself puts function at the forefront. It has a large zipper, and inside it is so roomy, it has a bunch of pockets so you can keep everything handy and organized. All right, let's talk about a small accessory that can make a big impact, a brand new Apple Watch band. I love my Apple Watch for tracking steps, activities, and all of those calendar reminders. 
So when I want to make it feel new, this chic watch strap is perfect. I feel like I have a brand new watch and it looks great with my outfit and all my jewelry. This band is compatible with all Apple watch models and you can choose from over 20 different styles. They're all made with a lightweight resin that's gonna keep your watch secure while adding a pop of color to any outfit. Next up, we have an accessory that everybody in the family is going to love. Let's talk baseball caps. You know, the unofficial classic American accessory. The sun shielding hat actually got its humble beginning as a sun visor on the baseball field. And today, it's one of the hottest fashion trends that we can't get enough of. You can always spot an athlete wearing one. The baseball cap is so universal that men and women can wear it every day as part of any casual outfit. This summer, one thing's for sure. The sun is gonna be out and you're gonna need a hat. So consider this affordable Old Navy cap. According to the brand, it is made with durable, 100% cotton twill fabric, and it has a curved visor brim, a fabric covered button at the crown, and those essential air holes. Okay, this next one I am personally excited about because I love this brand. It is the Kitsch Microfiber Towel Scrunchie Set. They're almost like mini towels for your hair. And here's how it works. According to the brand, microfiber material is really soft and tends to dry hair faster while helping to minimize frizz. So the scrunchie acts like a little towel to help absorb excess water. And according to the brand, this is what allows hair to air dry naturally and reduce frizz. They're great for everyday use, but also perfect for summer. You can pop one in your bag to take to the pool or the beach or travel. And now let's finish up by talking about shoes and socks. Yes, socks can make such a difference in comfort. And these are one of my favorite from New Balance. They are great because they are made with a fabric that the brand says offers cooling technology and moisture wicking to keep your feet nice and dry all day long. They come in an athletic low cut style with mesh ventilation that according to the brand is helping to cool and create that airflow. These are great for the whole family. And lastly, we have a wardrobe essential, a classic pair of white sneakers. You can never go wrong with a pair of white sneakers and these knit kicks from Kariuma are a favorite among the whole Shop Today team. They're available for men and women in 17 different colors for under $100. The brand says that these eco-friendly sneakers don't just look and feel great. They're made with bamboo, sugarcane, cork, and recycled plastics from heel to toe. But most importantly to us, they're so lightweight, and the brand says they deliver a low impact with every stride, which you need for all day comfort. Let's go through the products one more time. The L.L. Bean Boat and Tote Bag, the Clippa, the Bagu Puffy Laptop Sleeve, the Lululemon Everywhere Belt Bag, the Resin Apple Watch Band, the Old Navy Baseball Cap, the Kitsch Microfiber Towel Scrunchies, the New Balance Cooling Socks, and the Kariuma Off-White Knit Sneakers. That's it for Editor's Picks. Up next, lifestyle influencer Jasmine Snow is chatting with Mako and Lobu about some of her favorite must-have products to style your weekend and office looks. From backpacks to mules, we've got a lot of great products coming your way.
Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. If anyone knows how to style an outfit, it's our guest today, Jasmine Snow. She's a style expert and she's here to share her tips and tricks for elevating your look at the office or on the weekend. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. It's been so long and I'm so excited that we're talking about accessories for all. So here's the number one question. When it comes to shopping for accessories, should I be looking for inexpensive pieces or should I invest in my accessories? Well, what I always do is I always go for the inexpensive pieces. Here's the thing. I love to change it up, switch it out, change it with every outfit. So you don't want to spend tons and tons of money and the trends change on the pieces that are classic. You're going to buy real jewelry. If you're going for like diamonds or something like that, of course, invest, but you know, really save that for big gifts that you want to ask for the other trendy stuff. Just do it where it's really inexpensive, affordable, and you can just have fun with it. And that's the whole idea, having fun. So let's speak about having fun. Can you mix patterns or prints or metals when it comes to accessories? I am all about the mix. I am about the mix on high low, and I am all about the mix of metals. I think you can mix rose gold, regular gold, silver, gun metal, anything that you want. I think it goes it is, as long as it works with your outfit and as long as you feel good about it, go for it. Right? Accessories make your whole outfit pop. You're so right. Let's dive into some of your picks. I'm so excited about these bobble bar hoops that you have here. Now, I see that they got a little sparkle, a little bling to them. Are they more special occasion or can you wear these every day? I love to wear these every day, but I think it's great because you can really dress them up for going out at night, on the weekend. I love that Baba Bar always offers a pack. They take all the work out of it. You don't have to do any of the mixing. Like, I love a good earring stack, and you kind of just don't have to think. It's already done. And when it's affordable like that, you can just mix and match however you want. All right, Jasmine, on to the next one, some weekend picks. We have the barrettes from Lulu's. As soon as I saw them, I thought, okay, these are great for bridesmaids or a bride, but you can certainly dress these down as well, right? Yes, that was my first instinct. We're coming upon wedding season and it's a really easy accessory to throw in your hair and kind of dress things up right away. But you can also wear this. I love the idea of wearing it sort of casually on the weekend, but you can dress it up as well to go out at night. I just think it's really cool to just throw in your hair with jeans and a tee and it kind of just zhuzhes things up. It really does. And I like how you can just clip it into your hair and it's going to stay in place all night long. All right, on to more fun weekend things. This mini bag. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. I love the detail. What would you pair this with? Isn't she so cute? Oh, I love yeah. this one. Okay, I would pair this with everything, to be <laughs> completely honest. I love this as a weekend going out bag. Of course, it's a little mini bag, so it's perfect. It's not necessarily a clutch. It's this little top handle. We're seeing these structured bags everywhere. Mini bags are having such a moment right yes. now. But I do really like it for a daytime look too. Again, sort of that same thing as the barrette. If you want to elevate an outfit, and you're just in something very casual, go for it with the cute bag, like why not? Why not? And I like that you can still fit in your essentials, right? Like my cell phone can fit in here as well if I'm going out for the weekend. If you can fit your phone, like that's the test. If yeah. you can fit your phone in it, you're good. You got everything else. I absolutely love this purse. This is great for the weekend. All right, so, so, so cute. All right, let's move on to items, accessories for the office. I wanna start with the mules. Those would be great for like an everyday staple, right? Exactly, so right now we're all kind of moving from home, from the couch, back to the office. We wanna be comfortable. And this is a great update on the flat and you know, easing your way back into real shoes for the office. It's very professional. But what I love about it is it's got a little jewelry on it. So it's just a little bit of shine on the toe and it just makes things fun. It really is fun. As soon as I saw this, I said, okay, this is great. A transition piece, right? We're in spring right now, but we're going into summer. So so many different ways that you can style it. 
Exactly. Like you don't want to wear your big clunky boots right now, but we're not exactly ready for open toe just yet. So it's perfect. You're exactly right. It's the perfect transition shoe. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to this backpack, which is great for the office. Jasmine, I pack my lunch, my magazines. I pack everything into my backpack. Tell me about it. Yeah, so people are really in transition all day long now. Our lives have completely changed. We're going from working in a cafe to home, to an office, to picking up our kids from school. You maybe have your lunch, your computer. So it's really great to have a great big bag that you can put all of that stuff into, but it still is sleek and chic and it looks like it's an actual fashion piece and not just like your old school backpack that you threw on. Absolutely. Can I tell you a secret? I also looked at this. I have a couple of friends that are pregnant and I thought this would be a great like diaper bag. Is that crazy? No, I carry a diaper bag backpack all the time. And it's really nice because then my husband doesn't mind carrying it and it's easy for him to grab too. It's honestly, it is the best diaper bag for moms. It really is. I love a piece that is multifunctional. Speaking of multifunctional, this necklace right here is like the best of both worlds, right? Because you have different designs and detail. Do you wear it as is or would you stack it with other jewelry? Stacking is kind of my jam. I'm really into tons of gold chains right now. As you can see, I'm really always piling them on. But I think it's really nice to be able to mix your personal pieces in with chunkier, trendier pieces. It does work if you're going to like a wedding or something a little bit more dressy and you need it to be cleaner. It definitely works on its own. Don't get me wrong. You can do that if you'd like. But I just think it's really fun to kind of mix things up, have a little bit of sparkle, have a little bit of chains. And just, again, like, do your thing. Whatever it is that you feel good in, go for it. Go for it. And we're talking about accessories for all. I love how this is ageless as well. My mom can wear it. My sister can wear it. I can rock it. This is a great pick. Yeah, and it's accessories for all, but accessories for everything. So you can rock it to work. You can go on the weekend, go out. It really works. It's very multifunctional, like we said. Oh, you are everything. Thank you so much for joining us and dropping these tips about accessories for all. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, you too. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the Bobble Bar earring set, the Rhinestone Barrette, the Beaded Mini Bag, the Motor Chain Mules, the backpack, and the bobble bar necklace. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Chassie Post is gonna share her favorite accessories in Style Finder. Ooh, I can't wait.
Welcome back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post, and this episode is all about accessories. I've got some must-have items that will instantly upgrade and elevate your look in a pinch. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's start off with one of my absolute favorite trends of the summer, rattan. Rattan is actually the name of a climbing palm vine that can be woven in different styles to give you that fabulous straw basket look that we've seen so much of this season. And I love how the natural woven palm brings an organic and beachy touch to anything you pair it with. I mean, it almost looks like a little picnic basket. And these great bags go anywhere. Dress them up or down, wear as a crossbody with everything from your bathing suit and a cover up to shorts and a tee. Or dress it up by knotting the strap like a little top handled bag. I love that. And I recently went to a fancy event and I carried a rattan bag and I absolutely loved how it looked with my more formal look. Picnic or to the party. This is such an adorable bag. Now on to one of the hottest sandal trends out there for the summer, the H sandal from The Drop. And this is such a chic and easy option. And it's one of the most popular slides out there for two reasons. Number one, I mean, check out this really cushy footbed, right? So much more comfortable than the average flip-flop. And number two, the style. The H style we have seen absolutely everywhere. And what I think is so great about these is they go with everything. I mean, I love this fabulous metallic and this patent orange. I mean, bright's one of the biggest trends we're seeing this season. And of course, the classic white. I think a great idea is to leave these by the door and no matter where you're going, you slide on into these and you're gonna look chic. So next, we've got a mega trend when it comes to hair accessories today, the claw clip. And yes, as you have probably heard, the 90s are having quite the moment in the fashion and accessories world these days. But these little claw clips from H&M aren't your average 90s throwback. First of all, they come in a set of four, and I think they're so beautiful, actually pretty glamorous, which is not something you hear in relationship with claw clips every day. And what I think makes them so special is these beautiful materials. I mean, we have a faux tortoise shell and even faux mother of pearl and even almost like the great resin Bakelite from the 50s that we've seen so much of out there in accessories this season. And then they're even elevated with little pops of gold. And you can choose between four different colorways here. And they're so easy to use. You just clamp them in. And you can wear them in lots of different ways. I mean, you can wear a couple on one side. I love that. You could wear one on either side, kind of as you would a bobby pin or a barrette. Or go for all four and do a fun 90s inspired updo. On to another accessory trend, jewelry. Now, first up, we've got earrings, and Juicy Fruit is the epitome of summer, and this vitamin C set is as festive as it is fabulous. I mean, believe it or not, fruit has been a big jewelry trend for the past two seasons, and I absolutely love it. It's so fresh and fun, and I always appreciate an accessory with a sense of humor, right? These are really, really fun. So you can choose between five sets that include all of your favorite fruits. You can choose between sparkly grapes and cherries, lemons, pineapples, bananas, oranges, tangerines, and more. Now you can wear them as a matching pair, right? Or why not mix and match the fruits? You can do a cherry on one ear and a tangerine on the other. Or if you have multiple piercings, you can even look like you've got a glamorous summer fruit basket on your ear. <laughs> and they also make really adorable and affordable gifts. They come in this little gift box and they're great for teens or adults. Next, bracelets. And this chic collection comes ready for the party. 
the arm party that is. <laughs> yes, the layering AK party trend is having quite a moment when it comes to jewelry this season. And we are here for this trend. I love it. You know, more is more, right? So this set comes with four of the moment gold colored bracelets that give that arm party in an instant. It includes two chunky chain bracelets. Yay, I love chains. You guys have heard it here. Chains are a massive trend. One pretty cable style bracelet and one simple plastic bangle. So you can wear these all together or you can wear them on their own or you can even invite pieces you already own to the party. And don't be afraid to mix and match metals. I love gold and silver and rose gold together. And they have a not to believe price. You get all four for under $10. What a steal. Plus they have a classic look that works with any style. Now, over the past few seasons, we've seen a real focus on the waist, and I'm obsessed with these chic wide belts from H&M. They give you that perfect summertime cinch. Plus, they bring in another big trend that we've been seeing, crochet and woven materials. You know those really wide belts in leather that have been so popular, you know, in the fall and winter? Those are great, but they can be really heavy when the temperatures heat up. And I love a big square buckle. This buckle detail you're gonna be seeing absolutely everywhere this summer. And this belt is a little bit over two inches wide and it's made extra long, which I think looks so fabulous hanging down. Or you can always just tuck it in the back for a more tailored look. And I love to use these wider belts to sort of cinch in and give a new look to those oversized shirts that have been such a big trend. Also a wide belt is really flattering because it cinches in and shows off our waists. And this belt is under $20. So lastly, let's finish up with one of our favorite beauty accessories. And trust me when I tell you, we are not alone in our exuberance for this extensive set. Now this is the BS Mall 14 piece makeup brush set. And it is a serious bestseller with over 96 thousand ratings on Amazon. I mean, that's one of the highest ratings I've ever come across. And here's why shoppers are so obsessed with these. So first of all, you get a comprehensive collection of 14 makeup brushes. That's amazing. That's under a dollar a piece. So you really can apply makeup like a pro because you've got the right tool for the job, which I have found over the years makes a huge difference in my makeup application. And this set comes with everything from eyebrow, eyeshadow, and eyeliner brushes to lip brushes, to blending and contouring and highlighting brushes and more. Plus, they're really pretty. I mean, look at the rose gold. And you know that saying there's an app for that? <laughs> Well, with this set, you can be sure that there's a brush for that, no matter the makeup look you're trying to achieve. And lastly, I am such a big fan of this case. Look, it's great for traveling. You put the two pieces together, throw it in your bag. But I also like that you can use it as we've done here. You can break it apart and use it to store your makeup brushes on your counter. And it is always so much easier having all of your brushes right in front of you rather than having to dig through your makeup bag. So let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. So we've got the Zara Rattan box shape bag, the drop flat sandal, the H&M hair claws, the vitamin C fruit basket stud earrings, the dainty bracelet set, the braided waist belt, and the 14 piece makeup brush set. And that's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day.
Cooking Today All Day. Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then it's homemade granola with a savory twist. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of. Personally, speaking for myself, I will opt for chocolate every single time. I know you have a little canister of oats sitting at the back of your pantry that maybe you're neglecting a little bit. But instead of teaching you how to make a traditional bowl of oatmeal, which I already know you know how to make, I'm gonna show you how to hashtag upgrade your oats. Today we're gonna to be making my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with some added fun, coconut, and then a really easy savory granola. How's that for a plot twist? Let's get started. Oats, they are having a moment. They're everywhere these days. And for good reason. Oats are super versatile, they're really nutritious, and there's so much you can do with an oat to make it a star. But there are a lot of different varieties, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of my favorites. Welcome to my kitchen classroom. On today's agenda, Oats 101. These little guys are oat groats. I know, it's not the cutest name, but these are oats in their least processed form. They have a lot of fiber. And these are what they look like before they've been rolled out. They do take a bit longer to cook though, about 30 to 40 minutes, but they have a really nice nutty and chewy texture, which I find is really nice for a salad, similar to a barley or a farro. Next up, we've got my steel cut oats. These are simply oat groats that have been cut into this pinhead shape. Now, steel cut oats take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. They've got a nice chewy texture, making it perfect for a slow weekend morning when you want to enjoy a bowl of oatmeal. Next up, we have got my oat MVP, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. These oats have been steamed and then rolled out into that iconic oat shape. These take only 10 to 20 minutes to cook, not too long, not too short, but they also have this really nice springy light texture without being too chewy. I find that old-fashioned oats are perfect for just about anything. An oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, some granola. I use them so much in my kitchen. And finally, we have our instant oatmeal. These are the most processed form of oats from our little lineup here, and what you commonly find in a little brown packet destined for your microwave. These are very mushy in texture, so I don't really cook with them or bake with them, but if you only have about one to three minutes in the morning to cook them, these are the oats for you. I won't judge you if you use them. When you're always stocked with oats, guess what you'll never run out of? Oat milk. Because that's right, you can make it yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to make your own oat milk at home is some old fashioned oats, some cold water, and a good quality nut milk bag. When you're making your own oat milk, make sure to use old fashioned oats. Steel cut is gonna be a little bit too coarse and instant is gonna be too mushy. So we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup for my old fashioned oats and measure some out. Old fashioned oats secured. My blender is my BFF and this oat milk comes together just in your blender. I'm gonna add my old fashioned oats to my blender. We've got some cold water, make sure it's cold. We don't want any warm water here because the oats will get slimy. Nobody likes the slimy oat milk. Adding this in my blender. And finally, this is optional, but not if you're me, because I like a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of maple syrup. You can totally use a couple medjool dates too, if you'd prefer. Just a touch. You can even add a little dash of cinnamon too, if you're feeling like you want to live on the edge today with your oat milk. Now, all I'm going to do is blend it. Only 30 to 40 seconds. We don't want to over blend it because the oats will get kind of mushy. Okay, here we go. Oat milk is in our future. We're looking nice and creamy. Now, before I remove this from the blender, just want to show you, you can totally use a cheesecloth to strain, but I'm using a nut milk bag because it's a lot easier. I'm gonna prepare this in my pitcher. Now I'm just gonna pour in my oat milk.
We're making oat milk. You just want to squeeze it a little bit so you get all of that oat milk out. This is precious. We worked hard for this. Okay, we didn't really work that hard for this, but we still want to get everything out. Look at how creamy that looks, too. Like, that's some thick oat milk. I love it. And look at how this nut milk bag is catching all of those little pieces of oats. We don't want that in our oat milk. We want that to stay secure in the bag. That's why it's nice to get a good quality nut milk bag, because then it makes it super easy to make your oat milk at home. All right, we're gonna set this aside. See you later. And now we have homemade, creamy, delicious oat milk. This stores well in the fridge for about five days. Make sure you stir it before you drink it because separation is totally normal. I like to use this oat milk in any recipe where I call for a non-dairy milk, whether that be in my chocolate chip cookie pie or even my date crumble bars. So delicious, so creamy. It's even amazing in your coffee. And you know what pairs really well with oat milk? Cookies. Luckily, I've got myself covered because we're gonna make my chocolate chip oatmeal cookies with a little bit of coconut. I'm gonna let this chill while I go grab the ingredients. I have been there and done that with traditional stovetop oatmeal and overnight oats. Plus, I would choose a cookie over those two any day. So, to solve my persistent desire for cookies at all hours of the day, I'm going to show you how to make my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's wholesome enough to eat for breakfast. So, let's get to it. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and because I love being prepared, I have also lined my pan with some parchment paper. Now, we're gonna get to work on the wet ingredients. I'm gonna crack my egg in my bowl. Whisk that really nicely. We want no separation between the yolks and the whites. Okay. This looks great. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. Mixing the egg and the almond butter together really well. All right, this looks smooth and creamy. Now I'm going in with my melted and cooled coconut oil. Straight in there. We are actually going to be adding some shredded coconut into these cookies, so I find that the coconut oil really complements that super well. It's also a nice butter replacement in these cookies too. Mixing everything together. Everyone needs to become friendly. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. Can't have my cookies without it. And finally, for my sweeteners, maple going in. Maple adds that really warm and almost breakfasty taste to these cookies. And then we're adding some coconut sugar.
Coconut sugar and maple syrup are my favorite sweeteners to use together. I find that they complement each other really well. They create this really golden taste in these cookies. Because coconut sugar is really fragrant, it's gonna go really nicely with that coconut oil and that shredded coconut that we're gonna be adding into the cookies later. My wet mixture looks perfect, honestly. I have to give credit to myself. Now, I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. For these cookies, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. If you don't know what oat flour is, get ready to have your mind blown. All it is, is just oats ground up into a blender until you get that fine powder, like a flour. Then we get oat flour. How fun and convenient is that? Easy to make at home, you can also buy it from the store. Oat flour going in. We're having an oat moment with these cookies. We love oats. Gonna also add some almond flour. Almond flour is really dense, oat flour is really light, so I find that they create a really nice combination and a really nice texture in these cookies. Okay, we're gonna whisk that up. Whisking our almond flour and our oat flour together really nicely. And now, because I'm fun, I'm gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you buy unsweetened shredded coconut because we've got the sugar already, we don't need to add more into our coconut. Now for our star. These would not be oatmeal chocolate chip cookies without some oats. So I'm using old fashioned or rolled oats here. Oats going in. Time for a little baking powder. And a little pinch of salt. The salt is gonna balance out the sweetness, really bring it out, it's gonna heighten all of those flavors. Whisking everything together nicely, we want a fully incorporated dry ingredient mixture here. Dry mixture taking a journey. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold my dry and wet ingredients together until everyone is fully incorporated. So we wanna make sure we're not seeing any remnants of that flour mixture, right? We want it to be fully incorporated. We'll see how that color changes. Everyone looks really nicely incorporated, really well mixed. Thorough, we wanna do a thorough job here. I mean, listen, this is like this is like a bowl of oatmeal, right? This counts, a cookie, an oatmeal cookie, same thing. Okay, this is controversial. I'm gonna put my spatula down for this. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally, speaking for myself. Um, I will opt for chocolate every single time. So, I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. I measure chocolate chips with my sole, as you can see. I will be saving these to top the cookies with before they go into the oven. I want a few more. I changed my mind. Just a few. Breakfast, anyone? <laughs> okay, we're gonna fold the chocolate in really nicely. And this is a beautiful cookie dough situation I've got here. Okay. Time to make our cookies. Perfect. I'm using a cookie scoop here just to get some nice, even cookies. Want them all to be about the same size and then they're gonna cook evenly too. That is a huge chunk of chocolate chips I just got. I'm not mad about it at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my fingers just to flatten them down slightly. Not too much, just a little. This one has so many chocolate chips, that's the one I'm going for. I already know this. I've already made up my mind. I like making these cookies at the start of the week because I'm eating them for breakfast. It's kind of nice to have on hand. And even if you have a different breakfast, okay? Even if you're having your eggs or whatever else you eat for breakfast, you can totally have one of these after with a little cup of coffee. How does that sound? Pretty good? I know, because I do it all the time. You know what these remind me of also? Just like a really glam 
granola bar. Like a granola bar, but like make it a cookie. I've got some extra dough here. I will be baking these off later, but I do want to add a couple extra chocolate chips on top for fun. I went pretty heavy on the chocolate chips and the dough already, and I honestly love that for me. I'm gonna bake these in the oven 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown around those edges. I'm so excited to have some oatmeal breakfast cookies after this. Cookies for breakfast, anyone? I mean, look at how textured they are, right? They've got the oats, they've got the chocolate chips, they've got coconut. There's a lot going on here. Perfect for breakfast, but also for any time of the day. I'm not gonna you know, say that I can't have this after dinner, because I can. I'm so excited to eat them. And you know what I'm gonna eat them with? Some homemade oat milk, because I'm having an oat moment today. And I'm just gonna have all of the oats. I mean, look at that. So fluffy. You know what this needs? You know what this needs? It needs to be dunked in some oat milk. It just has to happen. Okay. I gotta get my camera out first because this is a perfect photo op. All right, it's taking the plunge. <sighs> oh my God, okay. All right, here we go. I'm so good, I'm just losing cookies everywhere. Okay, I need a sip of oat milk. You might, and no disrespect to your bowl of oatmeal, but you might want to abandon it after you try these cookies. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. I'm going in for more. Mmm. Someone hold me back. No, really, someone hold me back. Oh, you thought I was done helping you upgrade your oats? Well, you are mistaken because up next, I have my pot twist savory granola. I'm super excited to make it. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients.
When you think of granola, you're probably thinking of those sweet clusters of nuts and oats to top your yogurt. But have you ever thought about a savory version? I know it's a plot twist, but savory granola is one of my favorite snacks. I was inspired to make it by traditional Indian snack mixes, and I cannot wait for you to try it. We want the savory granola to have lots of flavor, so to start, we're gonna make a little olive oil spice mixture. In my bowl, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil is gonna help us get that nice, crisp, golden color and texture that we really want. Now, for some more flavor, I'm gonna add some coconut aminos. Coconut amino is going straight in there. Coconut aminos are made from the sap of coconut palms, and it's actually very similar in taste to a soy sauce, but it's gluten-free. So if that's important to you, there you go. We always have to have spice. I always have to have spice. I can't live my life without it. So we're gonna add a couple of my favorites. Cayenne. Cayenne is gonna add some heat, some spice. It's gonna really kick this flavor up a notch. Now I'm gonna add some garam masala. Garam masala is a very common Indian spice blend. It contains pepper, cumin, cloves. It's super warming, super fragrant. I love using it in my savory granola. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Nothing is complete without a little pinch of salt. And now because we have a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, a lot of savory elements going on here, I wanna add a little bit of honey just to balance out that saltiness. I love honey. Just a touch, not too much. That honey is gonna give that really nice, sweet and salty balance that I love so much. Now let's whisk everything together. Make sure it's really well incorporated. We want all of the spice, all of the flavor to be evenly, evenly whisked together. It's pretty potent. <laughs> all right, this is nice and well mixed. Now I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. I like using a variety of nuts and seeds here because it's really fun to play with different texture and flavor. Every single nut and seed has a different flavor profile, so it's fun to add them all together and just have a little crunch, a little texture, something different in every bite. So, I'm gonna start with my sliced almonds. I use almonds so much in my kitchen, from almond butter to raw almonds. They're super versatile and I just love the taste. I'm gonna add some raw cashews, super buttery and delicious. Now, we're gonna go for some pecans. Pecan, pecan. I say pecan. In there. I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. You can add sunflower seeds here too if pumpkin's not your jam. Pumpkin seeds add that nice green color too. It's kind of pretty. Okay, now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. These are gonna be so delicious when they're nice and toasty in the oven. Mm, I love it. Now, this wouldn't be granola without oats. We cannot have granola without our oats. Adding the oats straight into my mixture. Now we mix them all together. Make sure that you're using raw, unsalted nuts here. We are gonna be roasting them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, so you don't need to buy roasted and salted nuts. Look at how fun and textured this is. So many different colors. And it's about to get a lot of flavor. Time to add my olive oil mixture straight on top of my nuts, seeds, and oats. Leave no spice left behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Now we're gonna mix everything together. We want a very well-spiced, savory granola. So every piece has to be coated by some olive oil and spice. It already starts to smell so good, so flavorful. This is such a fun and easy portable snack too. We are looking nice and well mixed. Now it's time for the pan. Make sure you get all of those little resistant oats. They'll have a better life as savory granola. Okay, make sure that you're spreading your granola out really well, really evenly. We want everyone to have personal space, some room to breathe. This way we can ensure a nice and even crisp bake. 
we are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake this 45 to 50 minutes at 325 degrees in the oven. Make sure you toss it every 10 minutes or so to ensure that it gets nice and golden brown. Look at my gorgeous golden savory granola. I've let this cool completely. Make sure you let it cool for at least 15 minutes. First of all, it's a little bit too hot to handle as it comes out of the oven. And when you cool granola, it crisps up as it cools. I'm gonna store this in my cute little container, which I promise I can get the lid off because I'm strong. There we go. I love to store these in little mason jars or little jars like this, just so it's nice to have a snack on hand. So the next time you are craving a potato chip or a cracker, this is just a more unique and fun savory snack to snack on. You've got a lot of different flavors. You can customize it with your favorite nuts and seeds as well. So whatever you have in the pantry, if you've got some sunflower seeds, if you've got some walnuts, feel free to sub that in. Look at that nice golden color. So good. I've got most of my savory granola into my little jar. And you know what I also like to do with this? I like to put it on a salad. Think of this as the fun cousin to your croutons. Yeah, they're your, your crouton cousins. Crunchy, savory, really pretty. You've got those nuts and seeds and you've also got a lot of flavor there. Look how nice that looks. This is a super simple salad. I just did a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. This granola though, it adds a secret touch. Mmm! It's so good. It's so salty. But it's got heat and flavor. Wait, I need more. Like you've got so many things going on, right? Different nuts and seeds. Gives it a lot more texture. Makes it more interesting to eat. You've got something new in every bite. I mean, have you ever seen a salad topped with granola before? I think I have to document it. I mean, look at that, it looks so pretty. Croutons? I don't know you. I mean, come on. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Sweet granola, I'm coming for you. I hope this has inspired you to upgrade your oats. If you're neglecting them in your pantry, let them live, let them live as savory granola, as some delicious oatmeal cookies. Oats are really an MVP. Welcome to the booth. So happy to see you. With Father's Day arriving this weekend, we're celebrating all the dads out there. And we are going to start with a boost exclusive in the latest installment of our series, Dad's Got This. Craig Melvin sat down with the father son duo bonded by a sport they love. There we go. Stay in it. Push. Come on. Get it there. Get there. Father son coaching duo that are both named Alonzo Webb. What do I call you? Coach Zoe. Yeah. Uh, Coach Webb. All the way, DJ. There you go. Stay there. Coach Alonzo Webb started coaching track at the age of 17 and is now finishing up his 51st season. For the last 21 years, he's been the head track and field coach at the University of Pittsburgh. Coach Webb was one of nine children raised by a single mom in Pittsburgh, an experience that later inspired him to take on a fatherly role for his athletes. You know, especially when I was coaching age group track from eight years old through 18, and a lot of them didn't have fathers, you know, in the house. And so I became a father figure to them. When he became a father himself, Coach Webb didn't want to pressure his son Zoe into running. And so I told him I wanted to run. And he sat me down and he said, son, you don't, you don't have to. You can pick whatever sport you want. I was shocked at, as a, at five and a half even, like, ah, this is what we do. Zoe picked track and he stuck with it rising to become a collegiate long and high jumper for his dad's team at Pitt. In the back of your, of your mind, did you think, you know what, I could see myself becoming my father one day. We spent a lot of time around each other, you know, my entire life in the sport. Um, and I, I wanted my own 
identity. I wanted my own thing. But at some point in my senior year, uh, I started helping my teammates out a lot. I thought, I might be able to coach. I might like this thing. After graduation, Zoe quickly volunteered to coach with his dad and was promoted to full-time assistant coach the following season. How'd that feel? The family atmosphere on the team draws talent from around the world. Junior long jumper Ilsa Stegana came from the Netherlands to compete for Pitt. I definitely looked for like a new second family. Coming here to the team, you really feel like you are within a family because like the coaches are related. Um, you feel more connected all together. Coach Zoe added to that family when he became a dad to daughter Zara five years ago. Did you find that coaching helps you as a dad as well? Being a coach sometimes, I think you, you see a lot of different types of personalities. Um, you start to learn how other people were, were raised, the, the struggles that they may have, the, the places they couldn't communicate with their parents, and give my child the grace of, she, she might feel this way one day, you know, and, and it really does help me. Don't chop, don't chop. While this father and son duo may have a lot in common, their dress code stands in stark contrast. Coach Webb favoring a suit and tie at every track meet, and your son in more typical athletic gear. What's the backstory? In the summers, you know, when I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old, I would always go to the library, and, and I would just sit there and read for hours books about the Olympic Games, and thought back to all those books that I looked at, uh, and, and I noticed that one thing was glaring the coach would always be at the finish line with a stopwatch and they would have uh, a, a suit jacket on or a, uh, a shirt and tie and I started thinking you know what I want to bring that back and you don't wear a suit oh no <laughs> I'm not as cool as him yeah. and he doesn't pay me enough <laughs> in 2021 the pair hit a career high point when they were both awarded Coach of the Year distinction by the Mid-Atlantic region. I was the head coach of the year, he was the assistant coach. That was it for me. I mean, that was that was the pinnacle. You know, I said, if I didn't coach another day, I'm happy, you know. What's your favorite part about coaching with Dad? He's always been a support for me, uh, but as associate head coach, like that's, my job is to be there for him now, to have his back, it's rewarding. Coming up next, these dads have all the right moves. Meet the group of fathers in the UK who are members of a unique brotherhood, supporting each other and spreading joy through dance. Keir Simmons checked out their moves in person and even jumped in on one of the routines. It all started as a bit of fun back in 2012 in Brighton on Britain's south coast when seven friends all fathers decided on a surprise performance at their kids' annual street dance show. Paul Jukes is the crew leader and a founding member. Those of us that were in the crew at that time wanted to make our kids proud. That was ultimately the kind of main goal. Um, so you decided to dance? Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, there's probably other ways, right? <laughs> More traditional ways. Their kids loved it, and the Outer Puff Daddy's dance crew took off. Over the years, the group has grown to 15 men, all with regular jobs, from teachers and finance directors to mechanics and chefs, who meet once a week to create content that has become a global sensation. And then the pandemic hit, and my daughter said, Dad, you should get the guys on TikTok, they're gonna, they're gonna kill it. And it just blew up. Now they are viral legends on social media with nearly 200,000 followers on TikTok. Beyond dancing, this band of brothers has helped boost their own physical and mental health. One of the things about dancing is when you're doing the same thing at the same time, there's a, there's a connection where you kind of sync up as humans and, 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 and doing that, which, you, which gives you something really special. We've built this culture within us that the moment anyone's got any kind of struggles, they just verbalize it. And yeah, it's very, very beautiful like that. They perform at regular events, raising mental health awareness. So ultimately our message is about trying to break the stigma surrounding mental health, in particular men talking, helping others and encouraging others to put a support network around them um, so that when a crisis point happens, they've got the support group there to help them. Has anyone got teenagers? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can't tell me that teenage 
boys or girls that they're not just a little bit embarrassed as well as kind of proud of you guys? Well, I've been doing it for 10 years, so I think any embarrassment they had has long since passed. Oh, they were probably yeah. embarrassed a little bit at the beginning. They've got over it. But now they, you know, now we're quite popular. I think they think it's kind of cool. Yeah, because it's cool on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At their weekly rehearsal, I got the chance to see them in action. Yeah! Wow! <laughs> yeah, Dad! Go. Yeah, Dad! Right. <laughs> You're an intimidating group, I've got to tell you. I'm standing here feeling a little nervous. <laughs> right, let's get you in. Come oh, on. Oh, my goodness. Come on. And then yeah, it was really... my turn to uh, yeah, hit the yeah. dance floor. Three, four, kick. Down, slide forward. Nice! Oh, what happened and there? Again. Was I supposed to turn? Yeah, sorry, straighten up. Okay. Like right. it, like attention to detail. Already. Yeah, well, I've got good. a mirror. Nice. <laughs> so, kick with the left. Right, three. Kick with forward. the left. Kick. Oh, sorry. Down, slide forward. Straighten up. Nice. <laughs> We're going to build on that. One more try. Three, four. Kick, down, slide forward. Kick back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Woo! And now, with music. Some good dance in there, Kier. And we are going to continue our celebration of dads right after the break. boost as we celebrate all the amazing dads out there. Now, to a dad helping other fathers send their love to their children by putting pen to paper for powerful handwritten letters. Craig Melvin has that story. The first thing that we all have in common is that we have a superpower. And our superpower as a dad is our words. Blake Brewer has a story to share with every dad he meets and it starts with how his life changed in an instant on a family vacation when he was 19. Just me and my dad standing on the beach. We're about to go in, go snorkeling. And he looks down at me with this big smile. And uh, he said, man, I'm glad you're out here with me. And we put on the snorkel gear and headed out in the water. And pretty soon we got to a pretty deep spot. And the current was really strong. And my dad started to struggle. Blake was able to swim his father, Larry Brewer, to shore, but after CPR attempts to save his life were unsuccessful, he was pronounced dead, leaving Blake in a state of shock. I'm back in the condo, and my mom appeared in the doorway, and she said, I found something in your dad's briefcase that I know he was gonna give you on this trip. It was a letter from his dad that he'd been working on for months, and the words in it would change the course of Blake's life. Were there lines that stood out to you that still stand out to you? My dad wrote, as you're being faithful to the Bible, you're often going to find yourself in the minority. 
but I assure you that in heaven, you'll be in the majority. Love your dear old dad. That line influenced Blake to follow a path into ministry and in 2020 to start an organization called the Legacy Letter Challenge with the goal of helping one million dads write a letter to their child like the one he had received from his dad. But if you could have one line repeating over and over and over again in their mind, what would it be? That would be your legacy line, and I recommend putting it last. At letter writing workshops like this recent one in Northwest Arkansas, Blake shares his mission and teaches dads how to make an impact with their own letters. Jarrett McClellan was one of the dads taking notes. They hear so much of our voice throughout their whole life that it sounds like a clanging bell sometimes. And when we have an opportunity to write a letter, it's out of the everyday norm. What are some of the concepts the dad should keep in mind when they're writing these letters. I love you and it's unconditional. I'm proud of you, not for what you've done, I'm proud of you for who you are and I believe in you. And as dads, like we see the potential that our children could be. Yeah. And it can be frustrating at times when they're like making mistakes, but we're never gonna shame our children into who they could be. Now that he's a father, Blake challenged himself to write a letter to his kids a couple years ago. And when you read them the letter, did they react? Yeah, so I decided to go ahead and read my uh, four-year-old her letter. And, you know, each night I'm you know, trying to read her a book or a princess book or something. And then that night I said, hey, daddy's got something for you. I am boohooing through this letter. And so I get to the end of the letter and I, I look up at her and she looks at me and she says, uh, daddy, can you read me the princess book now? <laughs> <laughs> but the next night, uh, she went up to my wife and she said, last night, daddy read me a message. Can he read me that message again tonight? Wow. So far, Blake has helped thousands of dads write legacy letters to their children through his online and in-person letter writing classes. And he's still hoping to reach and surpass his goal of one million meaningful letters. Yes, it's about the, the son or the daughter that gets the letter. But it seems to me that it's, it's just as much about the dad that's writing the letter. I tell dads as you're writing this letter, like it's for you and your family, but each letter does honor my dad's legacy. If he had known when he had written that letter, the impact that it would have on my life, but now the impact that it's having on so many other people's lives, that's faithful. Yeah. Coming up next, a father and son side by side on an incredible journey. Meet the dad making a remarkable recovery after a motorcycle accident with the help of his stepson. Here's Peter Alexander. One, perfect. Two. Deep in the woods of Western Maryland. A nice one, make it count. A show of strength. And one more for the road and a son's love for his dad. That's great, man. <laughs> so, Scott, who's that? Legally, he's my stepson, but he feels like blood to me. Theirs is an unbreakable bond built over years, but cemented by tragedy. Just 19 months ago, Scott Spinelli was cruising down this country road on his motorcycle, a ride that would change everything. I'm rolling down there, not a cloud in the sky. Another driver turned right in front of Scott. He slammed into her windshield, the force of the crash throwing him 80 feet. His Harley destroyed his life hanging by a thread when his son Grant Taylor's phone rang. How did you find out about the accident? I got a call from a random number. He said, hey, look, uh, your dad just got in a motorcycle accident. He's not going to survive. Uh, your mom's hysterical right now. It'd probably be best if you come get her. Scott was airlifted to a trauma center in Baltimore. After surviving tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, receiving a Bronze Star for heroism, this Army veteran was in a coma, his legs shattered and his spinal cord fractured. The next day, doctors called on Grant to make a choice. There's not a good chance that, you know, your father's going to live, but that leg needs to go. What's your decision? It was a very hard decision for me and my mom to make just in a blink. It's like, yep, he would, he would be okay with that. Scott was in that medically induced coma for five days. Grant's dad, his hero, was paralyzed from the waist down, told he would never walk again. Suffering 
does two things. It, it either breaks you down and it kills you or it makes something of you. A lot of people don't realize that growth can come from that, is that you're not buried, you're planted. When you woke up from the medically induced coma, what was the first thing you said to him? All you need is grit and love. How did those words change your life? The words grit grabbed onto me and he hit me deep. Grit is a different perception of life. It's grind, grit, and grace. And being able to have that grit is uh, being able to just take that other step forward. While Scott was away for months of grueling rehab, Grant transformed his parents' home for his family's new reality. But he wasn't finished. Motivated to help his dad heal, Grant left his job as an event coordinator to become a certified personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness. Grant built a gym for his dad in their basement. They had one shared goal, a chance to disprove any doubters. You're never going to walk again? And I'm like, <laughs> watch me. Watch me walk. They battled at it together for months. We got to walk, man. We got to walk. Then a breakthrough. It was something as though it was a miracle. He looked at me and his face is red and he's concentrating. I see a tear rolling down his eye and he moved his leg. And on this day with our cameras rolling, Scott nice. did it again. He did it. You know, talking about not getting it done, we got it done. And we continue to get that done. I love you a lot. And they said it. For this father and son, grit was no longer just a word but a motto. I told me, son, grit's all you need. Grit's all you need. Yeah, and I took it to heart. Um, I got a tattooed on me the day that he said it to remind myself every day of what I have to keep on going and my purpose and my reason, and also that we're in this together. Coming up, a little dad bonding with some of our favorite dads, Al, Craig, and Carson. Do not miss it. It's right after the break. the boost as we head into the father's day weekend it's time for one of our very favorite annual traditions the today dads getting together to reflect on fatherhood and of course have a little fun check it out here we are here we are guys coney That's island mission continues you've been yeah. to coney island a lot I you know i came here when i was uh, literally this was it, 63 years ago this is a a place where families come. Yeah. I think there's no better place to talk about being fathers and yeah. yep. without our children. <laughs> <laughs> the Coney Island Boardwalk and Luna Park Amusement Park have been an iconic part of New York City summers for more than 130 years. And the infamous Cyclone Roller Coaster has been terrifying beachgoers for almost that long. And today, that includes us. 
All right, guys, here we are at the famous Cyclone That's roller coaster, it. which the warning sign says any person with a back, neck, or heart problems should not ride the ride. That's me. So let me walk you down <laughs> to oh, your, your guy. lovely Great. seats here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we secure? Okay, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of that. I don't know. Have you ever been in a wooden roller coaster before? No, honestly, I have not. Oh, really? Never. Oh, well, you're in for a treat. You know those smooth, uh, beautiful, tubular roller yeah. coasters? That, this is not that. Oh. Okay. See, Daily, tell the world our story. All right. All right. Good luck. Good luck, boys. Can you feel yeah. it rocking it oh, back and forth? Oh, is... oh now it comes the ratcheting oh, part. Yeah. Here That's... we go. Get ready, don't, baby. Don't you this scream. is it. Look oh, at God. that view. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Oh, baby, that's a roller coaster. Craig's looking a little green. Oh, oh, oh. How was it? Oh, that's good. Man, I, got, I mean, you don't really expect a 100-year roller coaster to pack that kind of punch. Woo! All right, I'm glad we did that. All right, <laughs> let's go play some games, something yeah, simple. Yeah, good idea, yes. something a little easier. Well, yes, of course. Boardwalk games, simple, classic, easy, or not. Hey, guys, you guys want to play? Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. All right, let's go, Uncle Al. Go let's go out. Let's go out. Come on now. Oh, oh just a bit low. Oh, 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 All right. Hey. I'm worried about this one. Oh, just as bad as me. Oh, oh my God. at least I knocked one down. Oh, All right, come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. Okay. Oh, here wow. we go. Yes. Your back's just fine. Oh, you got a did a lot better than we did. Oh, can, can he have that one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I love it. Oh, wow. All right, let's go. Let's, let's go. Roll. Congratulations, guys. Woo! Our last stop of the day, Coney Island's own Brooklyn Cyclones Baseball Stadium. Oh, I like the sound. Oh, the magical oh yeah, this is it. Oh, hey, oh, that's the it magical is. door. Wow. Oh, this is pretty cool. Wow. See, Daly, what position did you play? Left out. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible at baseball. Did you play? Second base. Yeah. I was, really? about, I was about as good as you. Yeah. But well, from the way you threw that beanbag. Wow. 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 Right. Carson Daly. I didn't think baseball little, was a little throwback to, to the earlier in the piece. Yeah, it was good. I like that. Did Very that. impressive. You're welcome. It's one of my favorite traditions, fellas. I know. Sitting around. Baseball? Uh, well, no. <laughs> well, that too. Talking, talking about fatherhood. Yeah. How's the last year been as a, uh, as a dad since we did this? It's been good. It's been great. I mean, um, my two-year-old now is really coming into her own. It's becoming like a little person. Uh, my girls have been into theater and singing and dancing. And Jackson just graduated from seventh grade. And it just, it all, it's all happening so fast. It's been a heck of a year. You know, Dell's eight now. And I was able to, to coach his basketball team. You know, he's, and I got to see up close, like the kind of man he's becoming. And Sibby's, uh, you know, she just, she graduated from preschool yesterday. Yeah. So now she'll start kindergarten. One of the big changes since last year is that my, both of my children have become aware of race. Mm. But now- How are they aware of it? What's an example? There was some sort of conversation going on in the house. And Sibby said to my son, who's darker than she is, Sibby's like, well, no, you're, you're black, like daddy. And I'm, I'm white like mommy. And in the moment, I was like, you know, I'm kind of proud that up until now, they had no idea. Yeah. And we talked about race and being biracial, uh, how the world is going to view you versus how you're you know, viewed in this, in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, but it led to a nice teachable moment. You know, it's funny, I, you know, it's no secret. I had that bout with prostate cancer and it was the first time I saw fear in my children's eyes. Mm. You know, they, I mean, they started crying. At the end of the day, that's all you want to do is protect them right. and, and shield them from hurt and or harm. Yep. And at that moment I realized, you know, you can't always do that, but you can do the best you can. And that's what I know our fathers did. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that's all we can do. And I'm 48, my dad died when he was 46. I was five when he died. Think about that, you know, the going through chemo, the hiding it from us, you know, we didn't really even know. 
all the days the doctor calls, the, how scared he must have been, my mom going through this with young kids, and yet our childhood seems so normal. And I think about that now, to your point, yeah. as I get older, I'm just like, you know that company that I think you make t-shirts says like, no bad days? Right. Like I have to constantly remind, like, no bad days. No bad days. Yeah. No bad days ever, considering, you know, what my family went through. That's right. You keep saying that. It makes me sad. I think, guys, I think they're calling me in for relief. Wow. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what that is? Yeah, I just got this. Oh, okay. oh the yeah. That's right. No, You're they're, 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 saying, love you guys. they're saying we're running out of time. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love Day. you guys. Love I, this you. is my favorite thing of the year. Love, I really is. love this. Coming up, we will share the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us. So before we go, we have one more video for you to brighten your day. Take a look. A perfect example of just how far parents will go to do something nice for their kids. So this was the scene inside a popular rap concert in Greece last week. It was wild. This is what it looked like on the outside. So dad is letting his son sit on his shoulder <laughs> so he could see over the concert wall. Oh my gosh. Casually scrolling his phone. Oh my gosh. Uh, his son's taking in all the action. Dad gets a lot of credit. His son isn't a toddler, almost oh a full-grown kid. Anyway, eventually, Dad reaches his limit. He brings his son down, and he gives his aching back. Oh Where That's can we good. send out? That out. is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You During know. That. That's it's not even boy. like he evened it out. No. Oh, I got a good back doctor for him. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing. Wow. That is love. That is it for today. We hope we were able to start your day off with a little smile. And we want to say a big thank you to all of the incredible dads out there. We celebrate you today and every day. And we will see you tomorrow with more of The Boost on Today All Day. Well, hello and welcome back to Popstar Plus Father's Day, huh? It's this Sunday and on today's episode, we're celebrating iconic dads from standouts in popular culture. Two remarkable dads right here at the Today Show. Plus, we're gonna dig into our vault for an interview that may be one of the funniest ever on today. We're gonna get started here with NBC Entertainment contributor Chris Witherspoon, who stopped by to break down his list of the most iconic dads in pop culture history. Take a look. Father's Day is quickly approaching, and there's nothing like a TV dad to make you smile, laugh, and even sometimes shed a tear. In honor of the big day, I'm counting down the top TV dads in pop culture history. When it comes to TV dads, Philip Banks from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is one of the best. Played by James Avery, Uncle Phil was an amazing paternal figure for Will and a great father to Hillary, Ashley, Carlton, and Nikki. And on top of that, his suits were always popping. Next up, one of the funniest TV dads in TV history, Eugene Levy's Johnny Rose on Schitt's Creek. If they're at the motel using the coasters, they don't need to know where the motel is. I was referring to a web address or a Twitter handle. 
All right, let me write this down. Or hashtag. Hashtag, is that two words? No, it's not. Now, it may take him all episode, but Johnny always comes through to save the day for his family, including his siren of the stage and on-screen wife, Moira Rose, and his children, David and Alexis Rose. What a complicated family. There's nothing like the laughs that come from Shit's Creek, y'all. If you haven't watched, please watch. Next up, it's hard to forget Tony Danza's role as Tony Maselli in Who's the Boss? He was the dad every kid growing up in the 80s wanted. I know I sure did. Morning. May I help you? Well, if you're Angela Bauer, I'm here to help you. I beg your pardon. I'm Tony Maselli. I'm here about the job. Oh, I'm sorry. There must be a mistake. This job is for a housekeeper. That's me, Mr. Goodmark. <laughs> Tony was an easygoing and spontaneous stay-at-home dad and housekeeper, breaking conventions of what a typical father did during that time. What a guy. Yeah, but there's something great about waiting for the person that you love. What? Well, in the meantime, you get to be with all the people that you love. You know, your family. Now on to one of the most enduring father figures on television, Bob Saget's character Danny Tanner on Full House. Danny was an incredible single father who managed so much at once, from his job as a morning talk show host to dealing with Kimmy being around all the time. What couldn't he do with ease? Speaking of iconic TV families, the Winslow family in Family Matters is one to remember. And Carl Winslow was quite the dad. Played by Reginald Bell Johnson, Carl was a caring and loving father, especially when he had to deal with Urkel shenanigans without completely blowing up. Are you crazy about me? Sure. <laughs> well, do you like me a lot? Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, Carl and his wife, Harriet Winslow, remain couple goals to this day. Let's talk about another incredible TV dad, George Jefferson on The Jeffersons. According to him, you are descended from African royalty. Royalty? Oh, but that doesn't mean anything to George, Mr. Bentley. You see, he doesn't care about his ancestors. Isn't that right, George? King George. George, played by Sherman Hensley, was the co-founder and president of Jefferson Cleaners, a successful business with seven shops in New York City. George was your quintessential tell-it-like-it-is father. He was truly ahead of his time, y'all. Plus, the Jefferson's theme song, You're Moving On Up, still hits different to this day. Next up, one of the most stylish dads and best dressed on TV, Michael Kyle on My Wife and Kids. All right, so what did you learn from this? Only use my evil genius for good. <laughs> and what else? Never mess with the superior intelligence. That's <laughs> what I wanted. Played by Damon Wayans, Michael was overprotective, but had a great sense of humor. It was pretty hard to get one over on this TV dad. Plus, he dealt with his wife, played by Tisha Campbell, who seemed to be ready to blow up on him at any given moment. We love a man of many talents, y'all. Now on to another great dad, Jason Seaver from Growing Pains. What's great about Dr. Seaver is that he didn't pretend to always have the answers. He listened to his kids and grew into his role as a dad right alongside of them as they navigated their teen years. Jason was played by Alan Thicke and when he passed away suddenly in 2016, it was apparent how much Jason was loved as a character. He truly set the tone for how cool, calm and collected an 80s dad could be. Last but not least, a father who broke the mold of what a TV father could be, Ray Campbell and Sister Sister. Oh, I'm so proud I could burst. <laughs> yeah, well, clean up after yourself. <laughs> Tim Reed played Ray, an adoptive father, which is something we hadn't seen before in a 90s sitcom. Ray had a tough exterior, but deep down inside, he was the ultimate girl dad. What amazing TV dads. I hope you take some time this weekend to watch one of these shows with your father. I know I'll be showing my son some of my favorites too. Oh, how do you pick? I mean, there's so many great dads on that list, including Eugene Levy. You know, back in 2020, Eugene stopped by Studio 1A in honor of the series finale of Schitt's Creek. Eugene and his son Dan were here and had quite the funny on-screen moment. Take a look. Can you guys each take off your glasses for one second? You, are you Do you mind? Ask us to switch. Uh, no, just one second. I just they're attached. Oh. Okay, now I was going to decide, like, I love the brows. Uh -huh. Can I just ask for one favor? Uh-oh. Will you keep your glasses off? Yes. Will you please? I just want a little eyebrow choreography. I just want to I just want to judge. Okay, you go first. Oh, what would you, you like me to do, do with you, them? You do your thing. You do what you do with them. I'll raise yeah. one. No. <laughs> I'll raise a single left brow. Can you I'll do that? I'll raise you that brow. Oh. And then oh, wait, I'll switch oh, wait, to a right. Wait. And then I'll go to a left. Wait. And then I'll switch to a right. And then I'll go to a left. I think and you're... then I'll dance a bit. Dance a bit. Uh -huh. Wait, wait. I think 
I Is think, this good? I, wait, let me see. It's what we call instant choreography. <laughs> well, y'all are awesome. Scared. <laughs> what do you, what do you <laughs> ask? Do we can't tell. We can't have the powers. You got brows? Yeah, yeah, but I don't have the powers that you guys no, have. Y'all did the same thing. He, the he, gets his, he gets his trimmed. I get mine landscape. <laughs> They are hilarious together. They might be the funniest father-son duo ever. Coming up, we're diving into our vault to look back at another funny dad in pop culture history, the great Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire. Don't miss that next. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Back in 1993, Robin Williams captivated audiences as Mrs. Doubtfire, a character who went to insane and often hilarious lengths to be a better dad. The movie has remained one of the sweetest and funniest films of all time, even being moved to the stage as a Broadway musical. Now, Robin was here on our show in honor of that film's release back in the day, making for an interview that we had to pull from our vault. Here it is. I have a real block, and I'm really sorry to admit it. What? I can never remember the name of this movie. I keep calling you Mrs. Bumbleshoot. Mrs. Bumbleshoot. Mrs. Bumbleshoot. Mrs. Hellfire. Hellfire? No, no it's Doubtfire. Oil, oil something. Mrs. Oil something? It's a headline. Sounds something. like it. This is like an old Marx Doubtfire. Brothers routine. Hey, boss, hey, it's a Mrs. Bumbleshoot. <laughs> no, it's no good. Hey, stuff it. No, it's a Mrs. Doubtfuzz. No, that's no good. What is it like? A Mrs. Mrs. Stoutfire. No, too late. That's a California. Okay, what are you thinking? Mrs. Doubtfire. Fire. That's it, bingo. Hey, get out of here, man, Gravity. You're bothering me. <laughs> so the name of the movie, therefore, is Mrs. Mrs. Doubtfire. Doubtfire. Right. Okay. Mrs. Doubtfire began as a children's book in England. Yeah. Uh, by Anne Reese, I think. It's a love story, basically, about a man and his children. And going through, you know, being separated from them and being so... It's a custody. And in the beginning, he has partial custody of almost negligible custody, where it's just like he can only see them once a week. But for him, that's insane. He's been with them every day of their lives since they were born. He can't imagine being away from them for one day. So he goes and takes a desperate measure to be with them every day. Daniel, hi. Could you make me a woman? Honey, I'm so happy. And the first thing you do is say, hey, get me Harvey Firestick. <laughs> get me Harvey. I feel like Gloria Swanson. You look like a mother. You know, and actually the scenes with him we based on the oh. makeup tests, you know, where I actually did. I tried first, you know, putting on just a wig and makeup and whew, not an attractive woman, you know. The crying game, the road company. <laughs> Look at me, it's like, oh God, these wigs. And then we started to go with the black wig like this. And we did, it was like kiss of the cobra woman. I have no sister. And then we get into the little, the, the nose, it became Margaret Hamilton. No! <laughs> you and your little prosthetics too. I'm melting. The lights are hot. <laughs> then we put a chin on it. Was, it was Margaret Thatcher. And all of a sudden, I miss you, Ron. Give her up. Just say no to her. And then we put on a full face and slowly the wig and the bodysuit and the stockings. 
and it got to be almost a little bit like bone appetite. <laughs> and we're working our way slowly north, and we changed the voice up a little bit, and there she was, Euphigenia Doubtfire, a sweet gentlewoman so nourishing and genteel that she could breastfeed a scorpion, but still could get out there and hand wrestle a German paratrooper and say, give it up, you nazi bastard. She's the Trojan housekeeper. <laughs> and there I am inside going, hey, kids, I'm home. We always watch Dick Van Dyke. Really? Well, not anymore. The guy who did the makeup for Mrs. Doubtfire, who designed it, is a guy named Greg Canham, who uh, won an Academy Award for Dracula, and the lady who applied it. And, you know, the, the thing that makes a makeup great and believable is how you paint it. It's the painting of it. It's like an art. That's why they're makeup artists. And they really, it's the texturing. And her name is V. Neal. And uh, there's a, Yolanda did the wigs. She's amazing. I mean, it's How long was this every day? Three and a half hours. Some days four. I mean, because it really, it depends. It just depends on makeup pieces. If you leave them, if they're not fresh, and a good fresh piece of makeup <laughs> is like a nice lox. It sits on your face in the right places, and you're going, give me some cream cheese. I'm happy. It sits there, and it becomes part of you. And after a few hours, it's like House of Wax outtakes. <laughs> or maybe Reagan at home right now. Mommy, I think we shouldn't go out in the sun anymore. But. Did you ever go on the street as Mrs. Doubtfire? I did, and I walked into uh, one of the, in San Francisco, where we shot sometimes in North Beach. There's some unusual shops. <laughs> and I, you walk into a head shop, you know, these things with these posters and the guy behind the counter slightly with a map of Iowa for eyes. <laughs> and he's, he's got all these hash pipes and he's like, can I help you? Yes, the bong. <laughs> The, the supercharger. How much for the supercharger with the giant hash pipe there? What is that one like? We have a mahjong group and we just want to play a little bit slower. <laughs> Three no tile trump over there. Eh? Our mahjong group gets together and smokes a few bowls. And funny how we're there for a whole month. Just there goes all the Esther security chicks and our Medicaid. Oh dear God, you know you sit there after a while and we just laugh and take off our clothes. Oh, and snort Maylocks. <laughs> oh, God, that's it then. Well, we've done it all, haven't we, Jean? Would you like to come back tomorrow? I Please. Same room. Same place. Same outfit. Same temperature. Same perspiration. We'll be back. <laughs> it's wonderful. I want to be back in the Tennessee Williams suite. <laughs> this mendacity place is so wonderful. Oh, I'm sweating. There's such a nice schwitz in here. It's so nice to do an interview in the sauna. Tomorrow on today, with all of the perspiring Robin Williams's tomorrow on today that's a very Buddhist introduction <laughs> tomorrow on today we will be here now if not we will get there later <laughs> be here now with us tomorrow on today somebody at home is going oh I should stop taking Prozac man this is really <laughs> making sense now that is quite the throwback I miss him and those interviews Coming up, we are going to fast forward almost 30 years to the reimagination of a movie that showcases the love of a father. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. On June 16th, 1950, Father of the Bride first premiered uh, offering a comedic look at a dad's experience preparing his daughter's wedding. The movie was remade in 1990, becoming a huge box office success, and then again was reimagined by Max in 2021. The latest version depicted a Cuban-American family offering a new take on that classic story. Andy Garcia playing the father of the bride and his co-star Gloria Stefan. They stopped by Studio 1A to tell us all about that film. Touch big guy. We don't have a choice. Oh, we're supposed to play the perfect family until Sophie gets married? Or we could say, sorry to spoil your happiness, but we're getting a divorce, muscle tough. Mommy, Papi, this is Alan Castillo. This is my mom, Ingrid Herrera. Mrs. Herrera, such a pleasure to finally meet you. Please call me Ingrid and give me a hug, uh, mijo. <laughs> mm. uh, un placer, Ingrid. Para mí. And this is my dad, Guillermo Herrera. Mr. Herrera, such a pleasure, sir. Likewise. <laughs> this is going to, first of all, your all's timing is amazing. Oh. And it did not surprise me at all to learn that y'all have been friends forever and a day. Yeah, in fact, back when you and Emilio were playing at weddings and whatnot, somebody used to crash the set. <laughs> somebody who you were like, who is this guy? What yeah. was that yeah. story? Well, they used to play every wedding and yeah. every party uh, that we would go to, basically, in, in Miami. In Miami. Time. We were a hot band. Yeah. You, you always finished the party with a conga line. That mean with a conga. And they, yeah. This is before they wrote their conga. Right. It's a traditional rhythm, that traditional melodies and stuff. So I would crash and But play. you didn't even, you didn't know each no, other. No, no, You're no, like, who's this? And he was God. in and out. And we'd yeah. go, he was good. That's so why we didn't like... stop him or kick him out. <laughs> well, I know that you're a big fan of Andy Garcia's, but Huge you know, uh, there's somebody who's a much, much bigger fan. And it... It was proven when you got your star on the Hollywood Walk oh, of Fame. Your, yes. mo your mom was there. My yeah. mama. Okay, so what happened? Oh, uh, my mom oh, is God. my mom is the most like shy person. She doesn't like to talk yeah. about anything, you know, risque. But we're sitting, and Andy's wife was talking about that she like she's a homebody <laughs> and she likes to be in bed by eight. And my mother turns and goes, "If I was married to Andy Garcia, I'd be in bed by five thirty in the <laughs> afternoon." <laughs> And I'm going, Mom! What are you what? doing? <laughs> so, in front of his wife. Oh, my Lord. So this chemistry was was always there. I we mean, did, obviously, y'all been friends forever. We've been rehearsing this for 30 years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you're in, a, you're in a marriage that's been going on for how many years? 40 well, years. 40 yeah. years. What's the magic there? What do you think makes a marriage last that long? As Emilio says, right, is right. That you just say yes to everything, to everything yeah, your exactly. wife says. <laughs> I, you want, I do <laughs> love the plot of this movie. So it is, as we revealed in that clip, that you guys are about to get divorced and all of a sudden, poof, right. your daughter ends up getting married. Tell us a little yeah. bit more about it. Well, it's like the first obstacle yeah. right off the top, you know. Our, our marriage is on the rocks. You know, this. It's mm -hmm. and she's trying to... Yeah, he's been going to therapy for a year, but it hasn't gone through him. So he's been <laughs> just sitting My there. My therapy is like, well, well, how much more time do we have? Yeah, exactly. How about, how about the comedic timing? I was so turned on by that. Is oh, this, do thank you, you love? I that love lane, comedy. Gloria? Yeah. First of all, I love it. Yeah. My whole family, we, we are constantly joking, and Always. everybody, and we were very irreverent and. My mom was not the sarcastic one. I got that from my dad. Yeah. But my sister, everybody in the family is like on it. And, yeah, and also, it. your daughter um, has a moment in this movie. Yes. She plays the younger you. Yeah. That was your idea, wasn't it? What was it? Oh, tell us. Yeah, it wasn't my idea. I, we had already, you know, I was going to be in the movie, and I think they realized that they needed a younger me for the opening, playing us as a married yeah. couple over yeah. the narration. And Emily is very much like Oh my God, she's like a ringer. Yeah. 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 So and yeah. he told he said, I "Let her loose." Guys. I said, yeah. "Yeah, let her loose." Say, go. We should use Emily. And you know, I told them she, they saw her on singing and dancing. Yeah. I said she can do it all. And then when we shot that scene, I went in to visit for a little bit on the set, and I just said, "You the stayed." Guys, I left because I didn't want to make her nervous. Yeah. She knew I it just said, "Go for it. Let Emily take over the party." You know, she did. And she did. She yeah. was great. Yeah. If a movie is remade. Not one, not two, but three times. It's usually based on a really good story. Coming up, we're going to be showcasing the great dads that we have right here at Today, offering their perspectives on fatherhood.
Thanks for sticking with us here at Today. We are indeed one big old happy family. We absolutely love spending time together and sharing our stories with each other and with you, of course, especially around important days like Father's Day. And recently, the Today Dads got together. We do it every year, and it's always fun. And we always have a great conversation about fatherhood. Take a look. Here we are. Here we are, guys. Coney That's Island. Mission continues. You've been yeah. to Coney Island a lot? I you know, I came here when I was uh, literally this was it, 63 years ago. This is a, a place where families come. Yeah. I think there's no better place to talk about being fathers and yeah. uh, yep. without our children. <laughs> <laughs> the Coney Island Boardwalk and Luna Park Amusement Park have been an iconic part of New York City summers for more than 130 years. And the infamous Cyclone Roller Coaster has been terrifying beachgoers for almost that long. And today, that includes us. All right, guys, here we are at the famous Cyclone That's roller coaster, it. which the warning sign says, any person with a back, neck, or heart problems should not ride the ride. That's me. So let me walk you down <laughs> to oh, your, what a guy. your lovely Great. seats here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we secure? OK, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of that. I don't know. Have you ever been in a wooden roller coaster before? No, honestly, I have not. Oh, really? Never. Oh, well, you're in for a treat. You know those smooth, uh, beautiful, tubular roller yeah. coasters? That, this is not that. Oh. See, Daly, tell the world our story. All right. Come on. Come on, boy. Do you feel yeah. it rocking and oh, back and forth? Oh, this is... oh, now comes the ratcheting part. Oh, yeah. Here yes. we go. Get ready, baby. Don't you this scream. is it. Look oh, at God. that view. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh, God. That. Oh, baby, that's a roller coaster. Craig's looking a little green. Oh, oh, oh. How was it? Oh, that's good. Man, I got. I mean, you don't really expect a 100-year roller coaster to pack that kind of punch. Woo! All right, I'm glad we did that. All right, <laughs> let's go play some games. Something yeah, simple. Good idea. Yeah. Something a little easier. Well, yes, of course. Boardwalk games, simple, classic, easy, or not. Hey guys, you guys want to play? Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. All right, let's go, Uncle Al. Go let's go, Al. Come on, now. Oh, oh just a bit low. Oh, 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 no. All right, hey. Right. I'm worried about this one. Oh, just as bad as me. Oh, oh my at least I knocked one down. Oh, one. All right, come on, Carson. Come on, Carson. Okay. Oh, here wow. we go. Yes. Your back's yes. just fine. Oh, you guys did a lot better than we did. Oh, can, can he have that one? Yeah. 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 Oh. I love it. Oh, wow. All right, let's go. Let's, let's go. Roll. Congratulations, guys. Woo! Our last stop of the day, Coney Island's own Brooklyn Cyclones Baseball Stadium. Oh, I like the sound. The oh, yeah, this is it. Oh, hey, oh, that's the it magical is. door. Wow. Oh, this is pretty cool. Wow. See, Daly, what position did you play? Left out. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrible at baseball. Did you play? Second base. Yeah. I was, really? about, I was about as good as you. Yeah. Well, as... from the way you threw that beanbag. Wow. 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 Right, Carson Daly. I didn't think baseball little, was a little throwback to, to earlier in the piece. Yeah, it was good. I like that. Did Very that. impressive. You're welcome. It's one of my favorite traditions, fellas. I know. Just sitting around. Baseball? Well, no. <laughs> well, that too. Talking, talking about fatherhood. Yeah. How's the last year been as a, uh, as a dad since we did this? It's been good. It's been great. I mean, um, my two-year-old now is really coming into her own. It's becoming like a little person. Uh, my girls have been into theater and singing and dancing. And Jackson just graduated from seventh grade. And it's, just, it all, it's all happening so fast. It's been a heck of a year. You know, Dell's eight now. And I was able to, to coach his basketball team. You know, he's, and I got to see up close, like the kind of man he's becoming. And Sibby's, uh, you know, she just, she graduated from preschool yesterday. Yeah. So now she'll start kindergarten. One of the big changes since last year is that my, both of my children have become aware of race. Mm. But now- How are they aware of it? What's an example? There was some sort of conversation going on in the house. And Sibby said to my son, who's 
darker than she is. So he's like, well, Bill, you're, you're black, like daddy. And I'm, I'm white like mommy. And in the moment I was like, you know, I'm kind of proud that up until now, they had no idea. Yeah. And we talked about race and being biracial, uh, how the world is going to view you versus how you're you know, viewed in this, in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, but it led to a nice teachable moment. You know, it's funny, I, you know, it's no secret. I had that bout with prostate cancer and it was the first time I saw fear in my children's eyes. Mm. You know, they, I mean, they started crying. At the end of the day, that's all you want to do is protect them right. and, and shield them from hurt and or harm. Yep. And at that moment I realized, you know, you can't always do that, but you can do the best you can. And that's what I know our fathers did. Yep. Uh, and that's all we can do. And I'm 48, my dad died when he was 46. I was five when he died. Think about that, you know, the going through chemo, the hiding it from us, you know, we didn't really even know. All the days the doctor calls, the, how scared he must have been, my mom going through this with young kids, and yet our childhood seems so normal. And I think about that now, to your point, yeah. as I get older, I'm just like, you know that company that I think make t-shirts says like, no bad days? Right. Like I have to constantly remind, like, no bad days. No bad days. Yeah. No bad days ever, considering, you know, what my family went through. That's right. You keep saying that. It makes me sad. I think, guys, I think they're calling me in for relief. Wow. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what that is? Yeah, I just got this. Oh, okay. oh got the yeah. That's right. No, You're no, off. They're, saying, you they're saying we're running out of time. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love Day. you guys. Love this you. is my favorite thing of the year. Love, I really is. love this. Way am I lucky. I mean, I get to work alongside some of the some of the greatest dads here at today. I always enjoy that. One of my favorite shoots of the year. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week on Popstar Plus. I hope you all have a great Father's Day weekend. And I know that uh, I'll be enjoying some time watching a little golf and hanging out with my children. And we'll see you real soon. In fact, next week on the next Popstar Plus. So long. NBC's Morgan Radford is here with us. Good to have you live in 1A, Morgan. Thank Good you. to see you. I'm so excited to be back and to see you all. So Juneteenth has always honored freedom, unity, and history. And part of that is celebrated through tradition, storytelling, and food. That's why one chef from Wisconsin decided that this Juneteenth, she was going to do something special and fulfill a promise made more than a century ago. A big idea finally come to light. How does this feel? I mean, just a year ago, this was all just a dream. Yeah, it's very surreal that, you know, th this is mine. <laughs> that, you know, that, this, this is, is your corn. corn. Yeah. Here on 39 acres of land in St. Helena, South Carolina, Chef Adrian Lipscomb is creating a sanctuary for black farmers. The welcoming center. Yeah. It's over there. Right. Where they can okay. grow their own produce and learn about the history of an industry that currently is less than 2% black. We were cooking as slaves, as the cooks in these kitchens. We want to recreate those kitchens. We want to celebrate, but also explain to others and to the public. We want the community to come to this land. We want them to be able to come celebrate on this land. Opening up a new world of possibility that all started with a mystery check in the mail for $100. So you did not know personally no. the person who put this check in the mail to you? No, no. Didn't know this person. Her project is called 40 Acres and a Mule, a reference to the short-lived attempt at reparations that gave former slaves land after the Civil War, only to be rescinded after Lincoln's assassination. It started with the special field order number 15 by General Sherman to give 40 acres and a mule to the slaves that were released from the Civil War that were following him. And the question he asked is, what do you want? And one of them stood up and said, land. How does Juneteenth and the significance of Juneteenth for you connect to this project? Juneteenth has always been celebrated with me and my family. 1865 is just a, a significant year. You already have freed slaves in January of 1865, but you still don't have the free slaves of Texas, not until June 18th of 1865. By the next day, they're celebrating, and they're saying, 
we are free, we can celebrate. And what is so interesting is that slaves weren't allowed to be in big groups. So a lot of those leaders came together and they bought land where they would go and celebrate Juneteenth. And food was a huge portion of this. The celebration um, of freedom. The celebration of freedom, you're right. Which is why Lipscomb, a mother of four who owns Uptown Cafe and Bakery in La Crosse, Wisconsin, decided to start her project here in South Carolina. A lot of history right here. A land. Uh, slaves were here. Slaves were here. With deep roots and African ancestry. Land is huge. Land brings identity. Land brings community. Land brings freedom. It allows us to navigate in this world, to create our history, to respect our history, but also bring forth our future. Lipscomb was able to raise more than $150,000 in less than a year through a GoFundMe page and with the support of celebrity chefs like Mashama Bailey and David Thomas. As an African-American chef, I am really interested in reclaiming the narrative where, where the food of this country started. Together, they're fixing up something special ahead of this Juneteenth, celebrating on their land in the best way they know how. Some of the best chefs in America yeah. are yeah. around this table. Helping one entrepreneur fulfill a promise from generations ago. Left the hands and made this food. <laughs> for generations to come. Amen. I see. It. And this is just the beginning. Adrian hopes that by next year, the land will actually host an archive of black farming traditions, three kitchens that represent the African ancestral contributions to cooking, and produce farms for black farmers. So her hope is really to create a safe space for them to grow, to cook, and sustain their own produce, while also learning about its history and where those food and food ways yeah. come from. The craft beer industry has exploded in recent years, becoming a nearly $30 billion industry. And now, emerging from the pandemic, many specialty breweries are flourishing, with Black-owned establishments in particular gaining a lot of momentum. While they make up less than 1% of the more than 8,000 in the United States, more Black brewers are now starting to open sites. In fact, I recently stopped by the only one here in New York that brews on-site for some beer and the side of... South Carolina home cooking and some conversation. If somebody's putting their true passion and their true love into it, that's a good beer. By that definition, Chris Gansey has been making good beer for a yes, decade. Gansey is the owner of Daleview Biscuits and Beer, the only black owned brewery that brews on site in all of New York State. And that happens in these tanks below a kitchen that's very busy serving up biscuits and fried chicken by way of somewhere very special to both of us our mutual hometown of Columbia, South Carolina. Where'd you go to middle school? Um, Gibbs. Oh yeah, we used to play you guys in basketball. We used to beat Gibbs all the time. You sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Gansey says he didn't even drink beer until his wife gave him a small home brewing kit 10 years ago for Father's Day. Being from Columbia, South Carolina as well, I know, especially in the summertime, cookouts are big. Yes. You mean to tell me back then you weren't like drinking tall boy beers? No. <laughs> no, I was not drinking beer at all. But three years ago, that hobby evolved into a business. How did you get from those home brewing kits to the owner of quite the establishment? People that believed in me, I had my wife and some close friends who believed in the, in the vision and it kind of pushed me forward. It's like, you, you can do this. Why not spread the joy? Now he's turning out craft beer and Carolina biscuits in the heart of Lefferts Garden, Brooklyn intentionally choosing a historically black neighborhood to help integrate an industry with little diversity. I wanted a place where I could be part of the community and also do a place to educate people around craft beer. Like, I feel a cold beer is something that can bring people together. Out of the roughly 8,500 breweries in America, just about 60 are black owned. My hope is we can help change mindsets in the neighborhood because the neighborhood is changing. And in creating and unity and, and um, equity. So that's my goal, to help create equity in this community. Gansey is striving for more than exposure and equity, but for a few teaching moments as well. Daleview's beers are named after lesser known civil rights leaders like Jamaican activist Paul Bogle and freedom rider Diane Nash. These are the last three in existence we sold out. Of we sold out of yes. Diane Nash. It's a beautiful label. 
And I love that on the back, you actually explain for folks who might be unfamiliar. Even better than the label is what's inside them. I'm not used to learning and drinking at the same time. This is a novel concept. Oh, it's not just beer? No, it's also biscuits. Wow. And let me tell you, a lot of folks won't recognize this, but that's pimento cheese. What, what you know about pimento cheese? That's, yeah, Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up. I have pimento cheese three times a day. My grandma would say, y'all put your foot in that. That is fantastic. Chicken thigh. Of course. Yeah. Now I said, oh boy. <laughs> Al Roker's gonna love this. A taste of South Carolina now educating Brooklyn beer drinkers, all thanks to a thoughtful present. Had your wife decided to give you a tie for Father's Day. I'd probably be a tie maker. <laughs> <laughs> You met a chef here in New York who's breaking barriers in the restaurant world. Yeah, his name's Charlie Mitchell. He became the first black chef in this city's history to earn a prestigious Michelin star. And he's only the second black chef nationwide to earn the accolade. I stopped by Clover Hill, his restaurant in Brooklyn, to talk about that achievement. And also, of course, to try some of that gourmet food that's made him a groundbreaker. The chef behind this popular Brooklyn restaurant is now being celebrated for more than fine dining. Charlie Mitchell is the first black chef in New York City to be awarded a Michelin star and just the second black executive chef in the country to achieve that honor. I wanted to always, you know, plant my feet here and be a serious New York City chef, so that was always a goal of mine. And look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> Dreams come true. Yeah. Mitchell was born and raised in Detroit and developed a passion for food and cooking from his grandmother. I think the thing that stuck with me the most is like she used to like this like whole fried fish, like whole fried bass all the time when I was younger, and I think that stood out the most. Head on? Always. Oh. <laughs> he attended culinary school for a few months, but preferred on-the-job training instead. I ended up like Googling restaurants in the metro area, got my first real job, and in that kitchen is where I was like, wow, like I love the way they work. I love how professional it is. Like I'm using ingredients I've never had, never learned about. Years of experience in world-class restaurants like 11 Madison Park eventually led him to this quiet street in Brooklyn Heights. When Clover Hill opened one year ago, he became its executive chef in charge of creating the menu. Mitchell's team plates an eight-course tasting menu that regularly changes with the best seasonal foods available. I guess it's challenging, but we're always changing something, or we're always trying to make the dish the best version of itself, right? So we may tweak it every day for two weeks straight if we have to, to get it to be like a perfect dish. That quest for perfection did not go unnoticed when Michelin announced it starred restaurants in October. Not only did Clover Hill earn a star in its first year, but Chef Mitchell picked up the award for best young chef. That was a complete surprise when they announced that, and I was just humbled, you know? 
Were you aware at the time of the historic implications? I was not, not at the time. You always think so many people have come before you, you just assume that someone has already done this, you know? You just, this doesn't cross your mind that you may be the first or second to do really anything. Especially here in New York City. Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think there aren't more people who look like us as executive chefs in fine dining restaurants like this? You don't make a lot of money as a young cook, you know? So I think a lot of times we're like chasing a very different American dream than to kind of put up with these aggressive environments that are often led by people who don't look like us. I tasted some of the iconic dishes that earn this unique place in the food world. I'm gonna come around and try this here. Although it's almost too pretty, pretty to touch. <laughs> Including a shark fin flounder and a spicy tapioca. But this is nice and it's subtle. And it's a Japanese mackerel. We dry age it, we hang it a little bit, and then we finish it in a little bit of beeswax so that it retains moisture. When people leave your restaurant, what, what do you want them to, to take away? I want them to kind of be, you know, excited or inspired about food, you know? Like, that is something that is very important to us. Her name is Opal Lee. She is the grandmother of Juneteenth. Opal, she's an activist and community leader, and at 95 years old, it's proof it's never too late to create change. I refer to myself as a little old lady in tennis shoes who gets in everybody else's business and has a damn good time doing it. That's Opal Lee, better known around Fort Worth, Texas, as Miss Opal. I'll see you. Okay. But around the nation, she's recognized as a Nobel Peace Prize nominated activist and leader. If you want something, you just have to go after it. Born in 1926 in Marshall, Texas, some of Ms. Opal's fondest early memories are celebrating Juneteenth, the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States. I had beautiful Juneteenth experiences when I was small. We'd go to the fairground and we'd have music and speeches and food and ball games and food and food and food. Juneteenth combines the words June and 19th and marks the anniversary of the 1865 date, the last of the enslaved received the word they were free. Freedom is for everybody. And we're not free until we are all free. At age 89, Ms. Opal took on freedom as her cause, fighting for Juneteenth to become a federal holiday. She began Opal's walk to D.C., culminating in a 1,400-mile trek to the nation's capital. Do you know we took a million 500,000 signatures to Congress when we got the call to go to the White House? We could turn this country around. And on June 16th of 2021, Ms. Opal stood next to President Biden as he signed a bill establishing a federal holiday for Juneteenth. I still pinch myself. It was fabulous. I wanted to do a holy dance, but my kids say when I do that, I'm twerking, so. While that legislation is what Ms. Opal is most widely known for, she's been quietly creating change in Texas for years starting with her time as a teacher. It was my responsibility to see that kids were in school. So if he needed some shoes, I bought shoes or clothes or food. And when I retired, that followed me. People still needed a place to live. They still needed food. And so I joined a, a food bank what started in Ms. Opal's kitchen grew into a community food bank, which now resides in a 39,000 square foot warehouse. Each day, it provides 600 members of the community with access to fresh food, household products, and pet supplies. We get chicken, ground beef, a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits that's much needed. This have impacted the community for many, many years. And without it, I just don't know what we would do. Ms. Opal's impact goes beyond the food bank. Opal's farm is a five acre urban farm in Fort Worth, Texas. 
We expect to feed about 25,000 people this season. Ms. Opal's work on behalf of her community and her nation continues to inspire those around her, including her own family. Well, I'll put it to you this way. I am the granddaughter of the grandmother of Juneteenth. I would even venture to say that she's the grandmother to the nation. When you think about having lived 95 and seen the depression and seen um, the civil rights movement and, and then to, to see the Black Lives Matter movement now, to see the first African-American president, when you've got that kind of span, you develop some perspective that's unique. And I think that she's really good at expressing it. Creating a legacy of activism, tenacity, and the courage to fight for freedom. The fact that all these things I see need to be done, if they were done, I'd stop. But until then, I'm going to keep on walking and keep on talking and hoping somebody will listen. Oh, we're listening and we are honored, honored to have Miss Opal Lee and her granddaughter, Dion Sims, who's the founding executive director of the National Juneteenth Museum, joining us from Fort, oh. Fort Worth, Texas. Miss Opal, I can't tell you what a thrill it is for you to see you on our air this morning. So many people are, they have this day off and they're maybe watching this show and they're saying, how should I spend this special day? What would your advice be, Miss Opal, for how people should spend this Juneteenth? I think they should spend the special day helping somebody else. I find that when I help somebody else, all my problems seem to disappear. Now, I don't want you to think that they go into thin air, but when I'm helping somebody else, I get help for myself too. Oh. So I'm going to advise them, help somebody else. Yeah. Ms. Opal, you, you've inspired us beyond. Dion, I know that the woman sitting next mm -hmm. to you must mean everything, the world to you. What have you learned from her? Because you, I see that your life is dedicated to service too. And, and that's really what has happened. I've learned from her that, you know, you give of yourself, um, sometimes maybe even to your own hurt, but it's always in betterment of somebody else. to our ongoing series, Changemakers, in honor of Black History Month, there's a new magazine looking to shake up the culinary world. For years, you may have seen some of the same faces on TV and in magazines, but you're about to meet a woman who is looking to add some new perspectives to the food picture. Take a look. 
It's the first of its kind for the culture, a new magazine celebrating black women in food and wine and written, photographed and illustrated all by black women. It's the brainchild of Clancy Miller, a pastry chef turned food writer. I worked in Paris at a bakery and a restaurant and I loved it, but I also realized that I wanted to work outside of the restaurant. So from working in kitchens to writing about food. When it comes to food and wine and beautiful cookbooks, there's certainly no shortage. So what made you decide that it's time for something a little bit different? I've never seen a lot of focus on black people in general, but specifically black women. And I truly believe that black women are the architects of kitchens and cuisines in this country throughout history and in many countries throughout the world. So I wanted to create a publication that would center our experiences, our expertise, and our voices in relationship to food and wine. Inspired by a famous writer, she went to work. There's a quote that Toni Morrison has said, which is, if there is a book that you want to read, write it. Ooh. And so this is a magazine, but I felt like this is something I want to read. And that was just the beginning. Clancy launched a crowdfunding campaign a little over a year ago and sought submissions. That was enough to begin putting pen to paper. 35 women contributed to the first issue. Gracing the cover, culinary historian, cookbook author, and college professor, Jessica B. Harris. I want people to feel inspired to learn something more about a person they didn't know about before. If you have never made a Somalian meal, I hope you'll try one of the recipes. So I want people to feel like their curiosity is being sated. In celebration of the magazine's release, we toasted three women profiled in the issue. Angela Davis, also known as The Kitchenista, is a home cook and an eight-year food blogger of The Kitchenista Diaries. Mashama Bailey is an award-winning executive chef and partner of The Gray Restaurant and The Gray Market in Savannah, Georgia. And Krista Scruggs is a Vermont farmer, winemaker, and business owner of Zaffa Wines, who provided a little tasting of it for us. <laughs> Krista, what do you think about this magazine? Because finally having a, having space and holding space when everyone else has but us, or that we've got to fight harder to have our voices heard. Mashama, t bring us behind the scenes to be a woman of color um, in the food and wine space. I do think that it's lonely. You know, I don't think that there are many of us. And it's really um, been an eye-opening journey to meet people. Angela, what would you want people to know? My daughter's six and to flip through this magazine and it was just picture after picture of black and brown women and food and it's all about us. I'm looking at our boxes. We're all in different places right now. One thing is for sure, food and wine and culture, it all, it connects us, doesn't it? Yeah. We're Aww. here celebrating our stories, celebrating each other. Congratulations, and here's too many more.
June 19th, 1865 is the day that more than 200,000 black Texans found out they were free yes. two years after the Emancipation of Proclamation. And these recipes are an homage to that. 100%. So what are we starting with first? So we are starting today with the Victory Chicken Burger. Right. This is Ooh. a burger that I made inspired by historically black colleges and universities. You know this is the time of year when everyone is graduating yes. and you see all the photos and mm -hmm. now they have a burger to make. And you went to an HBC. Clark I did. Atlanta. I graduated from Clark Atlanta. So listen, this Chicken salt mm -hmm. is a must. This mm, celery, okay. cumin, okay. onion powder, okay. you mix it all in if you can mix it in for all me. Those in there. All yeah. Right. And, and you know, in black American culture, so mm. many salts and sauces are passed on oh, from generation yes. to generation. So this is a chicken salt that I'm 100% passing along to okay. my Okay. <laughs> What's the verdict over there? Oh, come on. They're loving Ooh. it. Okay. Oh, they're loving it. We like to hear so, that. chicken burger. I approach my chicken burger just like meatloaf. Okay. Egg. So we're gonna put some egg, egg right first. in there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm, let me tell you, the secret sauce really is the sherry vinegar. You're, you're gonna do the sherry, sherry vinegar. vinegar. Oh, sherry vinegar. All right, we yep. got about two minutes left here. Breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. All right. And then you mix that all together, and then nice firm patty. Okay. In I'll, the refrigerator overnight if you can. Oh, that's oh, that might be yep. the, that's yep. the secret. Yep. How long on each side, roughly? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need about four minutes on each side. Okay. You bring it to the bun and dress it. Okay. White cheddar cheese is great. Tomato. Mm. And lettuce Pickles. and pickle. I want to yes. make sure we get to this corn no. salad. This is the most salad. important thing. This is my right. favorite one. Listen, growing up, I know you're from the South. I am. I remember shucking corn. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. Rubbing the silk. Oh, yeah. And so I brought some of that corn this magic into job. this corn, corn salad. Magic. I love you that. You like that? Yeah. <sighs> corn, green beans, southern peas, if you can find southern them. Southern peas. We were, we were trying to identify. We're like, quinoa? Corn. What is no, southern so peas. Um, and you mix it all together. And just mix it all together. All together in the bowl, and you have this beautiful mm. summer corn, green beans. What's the salad. It tastes delicious. And last but like, not least, the showstopper for Juneteenth, yeah. the Devil's Food Ice Box Cake. It ice is. Box Cake. Oh, my so God. No bacon. No bacon. No bacon. You do not have to turn your oven on. Cream, mm. chocolate wafers, and pecans. Oh, my God. Nicole. It's crazy. Nicole, oh, thank God. you. Thank you for this. Good Friday morning, devastating new tornadoes ripped through the south. Yeah, an entire town torn apart. Help is rushing in. It is June the 16th. This is today. Breaking news, direct hit. Perryton, Texas decimated this morning. At least three people killed 